Space, the final frontier. This is a review show for Star Trek The Next Generation. It's continuing mission to explore interesting plot points, to seek out goofs and continuity errors, to boldly go where no other TNG review show has gone before. Wednesday. It's eight o'clock. It's the TNG Review Show. Woo! Yay! Happy to get here. Yes! <laughs> Woo-hoo. It's us. Uh, we're back again after a, a lovely week off uh, for half term. We're back and uh, talking about Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, with my co-host, yes. <laughs> what else would we be talking about? Um, oh well, the Doctor Who was on in the interim. It was a decent episode. That, that's true. That's true. I've I've heard about it, but as I don't have a TV license or television, I haven't seen it. But uh, yeah, I've, <laughs> I have heard. Um, yes. So I'm joined uh, this evening by my uh, co-hosts, uh, Mazza McBob. Good evening to you. Hi. How, how are you this week? I'm good, yeah. Nothing really new in my world, to be honest. Just, um, you know, Halloween was fun. We carved pumpkins and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's about it, really. Fantastic. Uh, good evening, Chief Sean. How are you this evening? All right, just back from Dublin again. Third time in two weeks. Really not a fan, but sure, look, we're here and we're, we're doing what we love. You're, you're, you're here and it's all, all is right with the world now. Yeah. And back in the bridge of the good old 1701D. Back it back in the cockpit of your D. Um and good evening, oh, Tavikins. Tavikins. How are you doing? <laughs> good evening. All is well now that I'm back. I'm not having separation anxiety like a toy poodle, uh, like I did last week. <laughs> I know we, we had to put you back we had to put you in a box and we, we've got you back out of your uh, your data infused oh, box. Kettle. Uh, your kennel and we've let you loose and uh, yeah you're, you're back yes um oh, good you. evening to everyone in live chat including supreme Pego. Pego! Pego! <laughs> who panko, panko, panko. i believe has some great news this week tari kin turner what's what's supreme panko's news <laughs> Supreme Panko tied the knot. Woohoo! Oh, I have to cheer for that one. 
to your husband Ashley and her. Hey, she are now one officially. Official. It's all Very official. Good. So, uh, congratulations, Supreme Panko. Uh, if we could have some uh, congratulations in chat. Uh, yes, yeah, she's uh, she's got that loving feeling. Bajor and clap. Oh, a, a bajor and clap. Deliver on yours. <laughs> got that loving feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. La la ha, Shelly. <laughs> 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 traditional wedding. Kill war. Kill war. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, congratulations to, uh, to Supreme Panko. Uh, hello to also in the live chat, uh, Stuplin. Good evening to you, sir. Ruth, hello. Thank you for coming back to us after our week off. And my ever suffering wrench, Smiler Rainbow who's sat in the rain in a car somewhere waiting for my oh, son to get out of kickboxing. <laughs> but she's there on well, her phone. Well, at least we can help her pass the time. Well, that's right. She's uh, <laughs> She's got us there to keep her company now. Um, Yeah, so... Although well, no, P- Panko does have the benefit of being in the middle of the summer. The days are getting... Well, the spring, should I say. The days are getting brighter and all those good things. Yes, and I did um, ask uh, Tavikins, um, I was checking earlier to make sure, you know, whether Norway also had clock changes like we had in the UK, and they also had a clock change. So yeah, they're, they're kind synced of across Europe, yeah. Same old, same old. And then I was like, what about, you know, our, our international uh, watchers? They might be confused oh, by it being point. an hour different. And um, so, yeah, I did check in on that earlier just to make sure that Supreme Panko knew when we were going live. <laughs> no, the, the, the EU and the UK was a part of it, and Norway and... and uh, places like uh, Switzerland all agreed it together we'd move forward and back together cool. yep. so so Conspiracy. far nobody's, bro- nobody's broken it yet no. isn't it time though <laughs> isn't it time we yeah, got rid of it I refuse, I refuse to be in this case <laughs> well there's the talk there's talk of the EU pushing it forward next summer and not pushing it back and if the UK doesn't do that then Northern Ireland and Ireland could end up in two different time zones for half mm. a year That'd be interesting. I think if we were to settle on one, I'd prefer it to be British summertime, the sort of summer yeah, version yeah, than, the, than the normal. As I say, we're talking about Moonford. And uh, mm. completely off topic, as we always start. Spain, <laughs> anyway. Spain moved forward during World War II in solidarity with Germany, and then they never moved back. So they, uh, they moved an hour forward. So, I mean, they're, um, parts of Spain are more west than, you know, obviously, yeah. obviously Ireland is, but they're still on Eastern time for no particular reason. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, they, um, they should be on GMT. Also, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, a few episodes ago. Well, I think it was quite a number of episodes ago now. When I was showing my um, one of my uh, figures, I, I lost the Geordie that had turned into a lizard. Oh yeah, and Chewy ran off with it. Well, <laughs> this week over the holiday, he was found behind the sofa. And unfortunately, unfortunately, he's oh, lost his no. legs. Oopsie. Oh, no. Um, no, as if Geordie doesn't have enough issues. Geordie doesn't have, he's now, yeah, he's now lost <laughs> lost his legs, unfortunately. Um, I still have a lot of them, and a lot of the bits. So I've got his feet, ah. but the bits That's in the middle are, all right. are missing. <laughs> But yes, so uh, that that mystery has now been solved, the mystery of the disappearing Geordie. Um, Bless. But yeah, I do have another figure for, for today. Uh, one that I was looking a couple episodes ago for, and I finally found it, so no. yes. Milo says, can we turn Sean up a smidge? I don't know if we can do that or whether Sean has to do that. <laughs> um, Just poisoning yeah. pigeons in the park. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Um, I, I, I was, can. I was looking at... I've turned you up. Okay, testing so, one, two. Oh, brilliant. Hopefully. The hills are alive. <laughs> ah, Sean, did you miss my smidgen joke? I, I I may have missed just a smidge of your smidgen joke. Ah. What was it there? So we needed to turn you up a smidgen, and I said poisoning pigeons in the park, because there's a line in that song where he says, you're poisoning pigeons, it just takes a smidgen to poison the pigeons in the park. No one on me. Sorry about that. I'll give you a. All right. One of those. Sha la la la. Sha la la. 
Okay, so uh, Thank you. good evening to Mickey as well, who's just joined us in chat. I hope you're well, sir. Um, so, yes, Mickey, we're talking about uh, episode 21 of season four, The Drumhead. Uh, it's production number 40274-195. It first aired on the 29th of April 1991 and was the 49th episode to be both produced and released. Uh, it was written by Jerry Taylor, who we've, you know, talked about a lot in the past and her involvement with Voyager and the like. And it was a sixth of 17 episodes she had writing credits for for TNG. And it was directed by Jonathan Frakes. Yes, Riker himself. Two uh, takes, Frakes. Two takes, Frakes. And this was his third of eight episodes of TNG. Uh, also also directed 2004 film Thunderbirds, which is always widely widely well remembered and, and plotted. Oh, it's classic. <laughs> um, right. So I will share this so you guys can hear it as well. For those that missed it two weeks ago, here is the trailer. A mysterious accident and sabotage on the Enterprise. The Federation does have enemies. We must seek them out. A ruthless interrogator stops at nothing to find a traitor. I'm going to get to the heart of this conspiracy. I'll fight it. And Captain Picard becomes the target of a Starfleet witch hunt. I brought down bigger men than you, Picard. Justice hangs in the balance on Star Trek The Next Generation. We had a classic uh, Picard palm moment thing there another, another one of those i love a face palm i, I love a card face palm <laughs> so yeah we get one of those today right just on the whole uh you know conception obviously um you know jerry naylor wrote the script as you said um and you know they wanted it to be a you know this couldn't possibly happen here kind of thing and you know basing it along the lines of some of the um kind of communist hearings that they had in the states a while back or the salem witch witch trials and that kind of thing um so yeah you know quite a good good concept i think mm. also probably not deliberate but actually no i'll tell that story later it ruins the plot sorry come on go ahead there <laughs> I will say that I did read somewhere that at this point in the series, they were looking for a Shades of Grey type episode where they didn't have yeah. to spend any money. And they were contemplating this episode to be a clip show. Uh, That's show. <laughs> and they decided That's against correct. it because everybody hates Shades of Grey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they suggested a clip show. Michael Pill and Rick Berman um, despised the idea, said it was an insult to the fans. Um, so, you know, they thought we, we could do the, you know, the bottle show. They actually came in a quarter of a million under budget with this bottle show. Wow. Um, even though they obviously had like a couple of good um, guest stars to sort of, you know, boost it a little bit in terms of content. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all, all existing sets. Um, the courtroom was reused and... Mm -hmm. um, Based on the, the Enterprise Bridge from the films. Um, yeah, we've seen it many, many times in many different guys. We'll, 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 we'll get to that point. I'm getting ahead of myself a little. Uh, yeah, well, here it is. The, here it is. The, chair, yeah. the chairs are from 10 forward. Um, standard. Same ones used in Voyager, just put a little bow on the back. Tables for measure of a man. Those grills at the back are from Star Trek V. Uh, the, they they were uh, the Klingon um, transporter, transporter pads, pad yeah. background, yeah. I'm sure that life fixture was used somewhere else. Um, how you can tell it's the bridge. You can, you can barely see just it in this the top grill up corners. here. Yeah. The, the grills, those those kind of, yeah. um, is it rhombuses? You know, rhombuses, kind of, yeah. Yeah, ro ro inverted rhombuses uh, give it away that it's the bridge. We'll see them more as the, as the episode mm -hmm. unfolds because we're in this room a lot. So we, we can point it out. And there's your standard office chairs that's still in use for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The five, <laughs> five, five point, uh, five yeah. point caster uh, office chairs. Yeah. yeah. Health and safety still exists in therapy. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we open Is on the. Though, if the ship rocks, you know, it's having no something seat belts. on wheels. Yeah. It's going to be health and safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, here we are. We're at the teaser. Uh, so it turns out that a dilithium chamber hatch has exploded and sabotage is suspected. The explosion coincides with reports that a week later, the Romulans gain access to information about the Enterprise's dilithium articulation frame. Yes, indeed. Indicating that there is a spy on board. 
A quick investigation turns up one suspect, a Klingon exchange officer, but upon interrogation by Riker and Troy, he strongly denies any involvement. And here we see him being investigated and questioned. But question one, what is the Klingon's name? Is it A, Antak, B, Takuvma, C, Jidan, or D, Dejan? I will put those into the, the Jolly O chat as best I can. And you said about the exchange program there. Is that a continuation of the exchange program that Riker previously took part in? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. Cause... I, hadn't even, I hadn't even really kind of appreciated that one. <laughs> kind of connected that in my brain until you just said that yeah i i would have thought so because we saw um uh wolf's brother come across on the same sort of exchange program thing didn't we yeah Karen, and yeah. uh yeah so I, I imagine it's the same sort of thing he's got a starfleet badge and everything uh well you kind of want the badge to keep track of them but then again they can just take it off and apparently sensors are useless so who yeah. knows but so you just take it off like he's disappeared he's completely you know the computer's like he's, he's left the ship yeah <laughs> it's like when clark kent takes off his glasses you know you're just like where's he gone no he no longer exists yeah, yeah. um so wolf escorts him to his quarters and the klingon asks for aid from fellow klingon by asking wolf to escort him to a shuttlecraft and help him escape and in return, he would help restore Worf's honor through his powerful friends that he has. Worf angrily pins him against a replicator and tells him he will find out the truth. And once the High Klingon Council learns of this incident, they, he will be put to a slow death as a traitor. That replicator was actually moved for this episode, as best I can tell. So it looks like they deliberately moved it there to give Worf something, something to slam into. Yeah, every other episode seen this this guest quarters, there's about a two feet gap between the replicator and the door. But uh, yeah, that, that gap is closed. I suppose if we hit the wall, the whole set would shake or something. I don't know. I'm sure there's a reason for it, a practical reason. Here's pictures. <laughs> so uh, here you can see uh, there's a gap between the do door and the replicator. And uh, here that gap is being covered yeah. up so yeah and that was the end of our teaser that was it short teaser there's quite a few acts well some of the acts are quite short in this and then act five is john almost sean sean sorry stop. what is that noise stop it sean stop <laughs> i may it. have an open sweets there we go no. oh. Oh. just mute yourself <laughs> there's a mute um. button sean <laughs> Yeah, I've done it now. Mute. Two things about this initial part was, um, you know, it was that again that like really uh, felt like such a moment that could have been better, where um, you know they're questioning this guy, and then um, is it Picard or they say to Troy, "What do you think?" And she goes, "I'm not sure. Um, he might be hiding something." And it's just like, ah, oh. that's you it. know, so like, she's got. It's, it's always so frustrating because it's yeah. always just so vague and completely useless, and could have been so much more. And then the other thing was um, that this guy, um, Henry Warrenich, I think his name is, um, he was also in two episodes of Voyager, which was, oh, right. um, he was in Living Witness as foreign and distant origin as um, Farah Gagan. Gagan, I think, was the scientist in distant origin. He was trying to yeah, prove he, he, that he there was... Yeah, was like Darwin, yeah. Mm, trying to prove that there were some links back to the Alpha Quadrant. So, yeah. Um, which didn't come up in like um, you know any of this sort of trivia or other things. I just was just roaming around on IMDb looking at all the different people and realised he had been in other roles, which is good. So Living Witness, he was the the curator, I take it, was he? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, in chat, uh, Smiler Rainbow uh, says, "If you can't mute, you've got to share your sweets out, Sean." And uh, <laughs> there's pe people want people want your sweets now. <laughs> Sorry, Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> can't, <laughs> can't can't trade. Can't trade. Borders are Where, closed. Whereas Stupum says, Sean, put it closer to the mic. <laughs> 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 he wants to hear. Don't, he wants don't, to don't, hear. Don't. It could don't be a, a form of like um, you know, ASMR for some people, right? <laughs> some sick twisted uh Right. So, um that's enough. Right. Question one then, going back to the question, what was the name of the Klingon? 
What do we have? Did we have? Well, we had a mix. We had a mixed bag. A mix okay. Between C and D, I was a bit surprised. Jidan um, or Dejan? So we've got one, two, three, four people say C, and one, two, three, four people say D. So half what you, and half. What do you say? What do you say, Mazam and Bob? I say Jidan. C. Mm hmm. You are correct. It was C. I know it, yeah. So. I know it, yeah. Because <laughs> it's in your notes in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, just, I mean, I literally just looked at that, you know, I said that I looked at that guy, that actor and stuff. So, yeah, I've been all up, all up in, in, in this character's business today on the internet. So, yeah, I know his name. <laughs> I, I I have a, an announcement to make, so I won't be doing. I will have to do a con yell, but I haven't taken any notes for this episode. I just watched it, Ooh. and it <laughs> woo! I'm firing off the hip. Whoa! And uh, it also it does have to do with the lack of data. I'm just losing my I'm yeah, losing my it's, it's, here, and you haven't put enough photos up. It's 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 Sean, it's not your episode, is it? It's, it's yeah. Sean Sean will come in. Sean will come to your rescue. That's that's all right. Yours, yours, yeah. and Supreme need, Pankos and 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 Ruth's. Uh, that's the wrong one. That's yeah. I realize what I did. Hold on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Uh, we can just have you in between lore and data because I need twice as much uh, songness. Okay, and and you can put yourself and your goodies in the middle as as a consolation prize. There you go. So he really is sharing share, sharing the sugar. Um, yeah, I need it. <laughs> right. Okay. So on to Act One then. Act One. We've also got G Star in the house. Oh, good evening, G. I, I hope you're well. Another addition. Lovely to see you. Nice to see you, sir. I hope you are well this week. You're always welcome in the studio if you want to come on. Um. So, uh, Starfleet. Uh, Starfleet Command sends a retired admiral, uh, Nora Sati. Uh, and her assistants, including Sabine, Gen Gen Sabine Genestra, who is Betazoid, uh, to expedite proceedings. Picard offers to escort her to her quarters, but of course she wants to get started straight away, so he escorts okay, her okay. to engineering, <laughs> as they all do. I don't know why he ever offers to escort these people to quarters, because they never, ever want to go to their quarters. <laughs> I don't think that's ever, ha that's ever worked once, has it? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I'll be making it out. Okay, I really need to use the bathroom. Yes, can you go to the <laughs> I just wonder how do they deal with... I know they have star dates and stuff, but, you, you know, if they're living on planet or whatever, they would ha live in different time zones. So everyone would be constantly jet-lagged. Did they put them in stasis for a few hours to fix it, or how do they get around that? It's yeah. like nobody ever wants to sleep, but they go, oh, no, you know, it's 4 o'clock in the morning for me. No, just like, no, straight to work. I think, I think I've got it, maybe, Sean, your mics from your laptop. And not your oh buggerino, which is why yeah. which is why we can hear everything's going on in your room and and not just your voice. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. Sometimes That's why it does the sweets crap. were so loud, and and, and, and it's tapping out. on the keyboard really loud. <laughs> I think it's maybe what it is. Sorry. One two one two. Oh, that's better. Yay. Yay. It just, it just dawned that. on me. Yeah, it just dawned on me. There you go. This, this is my lower laptop. It's the one that doesn't sound like I'm underwater, but it's still not. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still talking from halfway across the room. So yes. There we go. <laughs> we figured it out right. in the end. We, we get Sorry. There. Okay. One week off and I already made a hames of it. Excuse me. <laughs> it's all right. We're there no now. worries. We're there. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, they want to get straight on with it. So they go down to engineering. And here we oh. are in engineering. Sorry, I also, when, when you asked me to mute myself, I just mute, muted the headset, and obviously that didn't work, and you were still like, you muted, I was like, I did. Sorry, I realise now. Ah. By the way, Panko and... Um, <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't that it wasn't Because I muted the microphone, but it was, wasn't coming through the microphone, so it effectively did nothing. Sorry. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's very funny. Sorry, what did you say, Mass? Panko and Smiler are campaigning for us to either do an ASMR episode or have to like have like an ASMR break mm. in the middle of our episode. Yeah, <laughs> and I like would recommend trip noises or something <laughs> with with data in the background. Data. So, so here's here's one of those rare shots of data in this episode. So soak it in, soak it in. Uh, yeah, tight booty. 
just on the subject of AS more, there is videos yeah. on um, on YouTube of like ten hours uh, enterprise engine noise, ten hours bridge sounds. Yeah, I've really? heard that one. Oh I actually had that on one night. It works. It does. Cool. <laughs> just like just just generally yeah, engine being noise. In a car, right? Being in a car puts everyone to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I actually put that on one night when I had insomnia, and true story, it blacked me out, and I'm like, oh, what happened? And I was like, you geek. You actually got put out by Star Trek engine noise. I was thinking of playing it one time on a stream and seeing if, like, you know, because we're in, like, 10 forward, have, like, the ambient noise of 10 forward, like, you know, the engine and the odd rattle of glass, you know, and that sort of thing. That, but, that would be cool. But then I thought, I thought what's, the, what's the... It'd be really difficult to do it, but... <laughs> the, it's on YouTube. It's, like, 10 hours of it. You can... Yeah, yeah. People have gone in like ten hours Irish pub sound, and someone has literally yeah. just set up a microphone in an Irish pub and just recorded, <laughs> just clinking his glasses and half heard conversations. It just goes yeah. on. Yes, Smiler, we can try that if you want. Yes, <laughs> we can try that. See so if you want to go to to sleep to the engine Enterprise D engine noise. So, the, okay, here's a, here's a weird one again, going off topic, right? <laughs> Why? Is the engine noise always louder on the bridge than it is in in, in other places? <laughs> For whatever reason, if you ever watch an episode and they're in like a corridor or they're in a quarters or a ten forward anywhere, and then they go to the bridge, the engine noise on the bridge is always quite a bit louder and more okay, rumbly I, I, than. I'm going to come up with a head a head cannon reason. So it's the EPS conduits that are making the noise, like the electricity <laughs> system. And obviously the, the, fa the phaser strips and that are around the uh, the bridge and it needs to be well shielded. So there's more power being shunted there. I like it. So it's not it's not the engines, it's more the EPS conduits that are making the noise. Or maybe it's the resonance of the engines. It just like goes around the saucer and then makes its way in and comes to a pinnacle in the Acoustics. center. Acoustics, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll yeah, although I wonder if um, when the um, star drive is separated, do we, is there any examples of us still hearing the engine noise, despite the fact they're running on batteries? Yeah, <laughs> yeah running on batteries. I was like, thinking about that. What happens when it's Fuck separated? off, great big lithium batteries in there somewhere. <laughs> well, they, they've got some fusion thrusters, but yeah, yeah, they're running on batteries, essentially, if they're on the star drive. Yeah. Anyway, we continue. Uh, where were we at? Oh, yes. Uh, Geordie LaForge and Data are relating their findings on the explosion. But question number two. Data reports to Picard how long it will take to gain access to the warp core at the current rate of decreasing radiation levels. Um, but how long does it take? Will it be 48 hours, 49 hours, 50 hours, or 51 hours? So A, 48, B, 49, C, 50, D, 51. How many hours will it take for them to get into engineering? That's your second question. 47, then. <laughs> well, you, could, you can answer 47 yeah, no. if you want. You can have, a, have an E. Uh, it Might wouldn't be right. A golden opportunity for a 47 reference. Yeah, right? it would have been. Yeah, yeah, it could have been, couldn't it? <laughs> Although the star dates all start with 47 in this episode. They're like, so they, they, do, they do shove that one in. Hmm. So uh, I'll carry on whilst people are answering in chat. Uh, LaForge offers to play back the sensor log for the Admiral. It initially appears to be sabotage, as all, all, as all the logs indicated normal operations 52 milliseconds before the incident and the articulation frame was indeed the culprit and it was of course that information that got uh, leaked to the Romulans uh, she sees there's uh, something to investigate and wants a full briefing I love I love the futuristic uh, cheap plywood plywood tacked on badly effect they've gone for at the base of the pool table there that you can't normally <laughs> see oh this bit here Yes, yes, that's definitely very futuristic. Yeah, I think it's how, do, how do you see that, Sean? Like when I look at that, I don't <laughs> see plywood. I how guess because you're looking at plywood? Data's arse. Um, yes, <laughs> no, <laughs> because it's I a still because it's a still frame, so I'm looking at it for longer, and I know. Yeah. I didn't notice it when I saw the episode. How, but how it, it's very it's very janky. The data's ass. 
You know how little Can they I'm... actually show? Why did you do that, Monty? Come on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, though, in that scene there, didn't wow. I see somebody going past in the background? A certain ensign that we said um, oh. you know, many moons ago appears in many, many episodes. Yes. But we haven't seen him for a while. Not Martinez. Uh, I can't no. remember his name. Ensign Russell. Russell. Where is it? Is that him in the background there? No, I think Ensign Russell walked through. Oh, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, I, I was like, is that is that Ensign Russell? And I went back. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it is, but you only got like a side profile. He did a flyby. I'm sure, it was. <laughs> uh, come on, get those answers uh, to the last question. Don't forget, guys. Oh. Um, okay, so in the ready room. Uh, Sati and Picard are discussing the situation when Worf arrives and show how Jadan's uh, hypo syringe was modified to scan and uh, resequence the classified information into biological tags uh, that he could then inject into his body and transport wherever he wanted. Jadan uses uh, this resequencer for his Balt Balt Masor syndrome. But Something like that. But Balt, 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 Masor syndrome. Yeah. Which requires close re- weekly, yeah, it's close enough. Which requires weekly injections. Uh, Sati instructs Worf to conduct interrogation, and Worf is pleased to do so. He's like, yes, I've been given some authority. Is it just me, or does Picard's head look haunted in that photo? <laughs> it looks shiny. It's very shiny, yeah. They didn't dust him, but also the, uh, the 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 light that's behind them has created a kind of ghost face. He's got like a yeah, like yeah. this yeah. this little fa- face here, little screen. ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the saboteur. Um, but it's funny. What, that it, what someone's... is everyone drinking tonight? Oh, sorry. yeah, no, sorry. I do have my blood wine this evening. I have got a wine. Um, I have a Sauvignon Blanc. I have a uh, transparent boomers. Look at that. You can wow. see data straight through the can. You can. Oh. There's data in a can. <laughs> well, I've got uh, a Riesling. So if anyone hates Riesling, this one's made by Eiffel Pfeiffer. Oh, I despise Riesling. It's, it's just very, like very, very sweet. Yeah. yeah. It is. Boomers. I wanted something sweet. Sorry, but I added white. apple juice and bubbles. Uh, well, not- bubbles is, uh, boomers is what you call Magnus uh, and anywhere that's not Ireland, just so you know. Right. Uh, I I have got, I don't know if you can see him, but I have got a Chupu's. Yeah. Oh. Oh, very oh. good. Oh. There, he is. there he is. Hello, You can Chewie. just make Lovely him out there. Did He's... you enjoy munching on Geordie LaForge? He did, look. You're not getting him again. Know. He's mine. He's like, oh, toy, toy. Oh, oh, want to play, want to play. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever get to the UK to meet you guys, you know, it's just to be to, 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 to snuggle on the dog. Uh, <laughs> he is a cutie pie. He is a cutie he is pie. Adorable. Uh, right. Where was I? Um, yeah. I like the way that Wolf, like, has been, someone's actually listening to him for a change. And he's just like, I want you to lead the investigation. He's like, oh. Yes. Well, if, if you saw, yeah. he totally bristles most, with pride. He does. <laughs> if, if, if you've seen the most recent episode of Lower Decks, uh, Shax, who's kind of the wharf standing, except for he's Bajoran, is similar. He's always saying, you know, blow things up, fire phasers, and they never do it. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, for those of you who hadn't seen the episode, they basically suggested ejecting the warp core and blowing it up, and he yeah. basically cries with pleasure. That he finally has the opportunity to do the big blow something up thing for once in a time. Yeah. And they were definitely thinking of Wharf when they wrote he, that. He, he almost skips down to engineering <laughs> and people line the corridors all cheering his name as he's doing. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, spoilers, but yeah, it was yeah. Very, very well done. Um, very they funny. were thinking of Wharf. Yeah. Bless oh, him. Brilliant. But yeah, he, he almost everybody cheered. In fact, I'll have a cheer. Here you go, Wharf, have some authority. Uh, right so uh yes uh, i can change the picture now lucky me oh no wrong browser over here i will change the picture you Uh, are welcome to just put up like in between shots of data 
just I was just going to say, I, I like the way they put a bit of tissue underneath the cup to stop it staining yeah. the table. Because by the 24th century, they haven't figured out materials that if you put <laughs> a wet cup on it, it, it won't destroy the table. They still haven't figured that one out. No. No. Some things are still magic, Sean, even in the future. <laughs> yeah. So, so with all the evidence stacked against him, Jadan readily admits his crime. He confesses that he believes the alliance with the Federation is uh, fading as they are weak um, and that the Romulans are strong and would make better allies. Despite his confession, he adamantly maintains his innocence in the explosion in the warp core. Uh, we can see the uh, those um, things you were talking about. Those earlier. grills, yeah, yeah. The, the the cutouts in in the show, or sorry, in the films, the back of the bridge. <laughs> there'd be yeah. consoles in there, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, isn't it weird that a ship would have an interrogation room? It's like it just seems odd, you know, with a full a full lab. Uh, well, think, you think it's they'd kind be... of a courtroom, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, but if, if something's serious enough to be in a courtroom, you think they just, you know bring it back to Starbury. No, no. It's like, yeah. just do it on the fly. It's fine. Oh, Mickey's on the strong stuff. He's on tea. Oh. Oh. But, con- controversy, Mickey, what type of tea? Yeah. Got to be Yorkshire Gold, right? Yorkshire, Thompson's, <laughs> Barry's. Please don't say Tetley. Tetley's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do they have twining? Do they use twinings in the UK? Twinings. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a UK Good brand. Tea. Actually, hold on. I like I like twinings. Yeah, that's good. I like twinings English breakfast. They, that is my favorite from there. Also, I have that in the cabinet. Mm. Um, yeah. So, despite this, uh, Sati is still unsatisfied, and Sabin believes he uh, that Jadan is now telling the truth. They are convinced Jadan could not have been working alone. Just going to say, Mickey, uh, oh, Sam, of course, it's green. You can barely see tr- straight through it. <laughs> <gasps> Mickey, it is Tetley's. From Belfast. <gasps> oh, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey's in Tetley's, and I'm the one with the Belfast tea. Oh, fancy that one. Mm. Oh. oh. <laughs> How awkward. <laughs> We're just a bunch of tea snobs. Oh, tea snobs. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, okay, Mickey. You drink any tea you like. Yes. Ignore us. Ignore yes. us. Enjoy your tea. Um, Bad parenting. Yeah. I'm sorry you came from that kind of a household. Do 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 you do you put the milk in before you remove the tea bag? That's an important question. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I can start us on a whole new uh, for us for us uh, people from the UK. This is an important topic of conversation. Yeah, let's not start a jam or cream <laughs> today. Well, I'll tell you a thing happened during uh, World War II with rationing and things. Ireland had to sort its own tea supply chain because the Brits basically weren't passing on their their surplus anymore. So we got these black teas from India that are stronger and dar- darker in flavour than the ones the UK gets. So now our tea is much stronger and more like... T- when a British person drinks it, it tastes like tar to them because it's, it's just so much deeper in flavour. But that's the way we like it. So we're happy with what we have. Yeah, nice. I have to try one. Irish yeah, tea, yeah. Uh, like yeah. Bar- Barry's, Barry's is my personal recommendation, but you know, people cool. people have their have their preferences. Barry's. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Um, so that was the end of Act Two. Anyway, there we go. Uh, should we have the answer to the? Uh, sorry, Act One. It's the end of Act One, not Act Two. We haven't just jumped in time. Yeah. Uh, should we have the answer to Question Two then? Yeah, I don't think we had answers from Panko or G-Star, but they may have just popped on uh, to say they hi. Might, they might, might have done. Yeah, yeah. Panko has um, wedding guests over, so she's got to go in and out. I'll say she's uh, on her honeymoon or uh, something like that. But uh, mm. yeah, okay, no worries. Well, um, so the answer was uh, for the amount of time they they could get through the isolation doors after the radiations decreased to uh, safe levels is. B forty nine hours. So well done to no. Mickey and Scooplum. Oh, well done. Forty eight. They were the only two who got that one. Wow. I do remember oh, reading. Forty eight. I do remember reading it and looking at it and going, "Oh, it's funny. It's not forty seven And it stuck in my head. <laughs> For some reason, I, I sat on forty eight, not forty nine. Oh, okay. It is B forty nine. 
If it's not C, I usually go by a multiple three, so I was, I was <laughs> one or 48. Because third letter of the alphabet, and yeah. <laughs> Didn't work so I've got out. a couple of comments, just general stuff from early on. But Admiral Sati, like, said about um, being pulled out of retirement. Mm. Um, but presumably that was, like, installed with full rank. I like, guess just so. Just as, like, a civilian yeah. consultant I, because I think... she's ordering people around. And, and they call her Admiral. I, and they I, call I her think... Admiral. So why, why, is she, why is she not wearing a uniform? I think you get to keep, not that you keep your rank in terms of ordering people around, but when you're retired, you can, you know, it's still considered polite if you were a general or something to be referred to as by your rank and call, sir, and stuff. Tavi probably would be the better person to ask on that. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was when, more about, when like, if somebody was, it did come back as an admiral, like, would they be allowed to walk around in their civilian clothing conducting military affairs? I think an admiral would, especially in that case, because when even though you are once you become a commissioned officer in the U.S. military, at least um, you are recallable for duty for life and you rate maintain that rank. So, I mean, even if the admiral is in their their private clothing, um, especially when she's being retired, it would not be out of sorts that they would allow her to wear some sort of elegant clothing. So long as the equivalent, especially pulling her out of retirement. Um, but she, once they pull her out of retirement, she is actively an admiral, as mm. in active duty. Oh, I so see. Yeah, can, they, she so can it's order a, whatever the hell she wants around. It, it's, it's a is it a billeted rank? Is that what it's called? I, I just thought that active duty admirals would have to wear a uniform of some kind, but maybe that's not the case. But anyway, you, uh, no. Oh, okay. All right. We'll, yeah. we'll so move a on. lot of Sorry. leeway that they get. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, like they made reference to the fact that she uncovered the the alien plot and conspiracy but actually you know wasn't it card writer Riker that uncovered that plot yeah so they I'm did not quite sure yeah. how she was the one that uncovered that she's plot. just taking credit for other people's work now <laughs> so that is an admiral thing to do isn't it and then well uh, she, uh, she might have got to the bottom to the start of it they uncovered it but you know there, there obviously <clears> was a route to it that investigations went on a tribunal afterwards you know after the, the big part was exposed so that's probably what they're referring to yeah yeah i guess mm -hmm. so although the again one... the hard part was done so and then the final one was about the fact that the warp drive was inactive during the first part of this episode so shouldn't there have been like no lights on like the, the warp cells or something like something visually should have been different surely about the enterprise if the warp core was offline yeah they shouldn't have had the big blue lights should they oh. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, we do. We do see the ship power down and the nacelles go off. So, yeah, don't know. That's yeah. That yeah. Sounds like a continuity error. They continuity just error. It's probably like a reuse of a previous shot without really, you know, thinking about it in the context. They the did re. Episode. Yeah, there's no new shots in this episode. Mm. It's all just reuse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all reuse. That's why I didn't really conclude any particular mm. shots of the Enterprise like that because it's all kind of reused. Um. Yeah, so that was Act 1. Thank you very much. On to Act 2. Uh, who's in the lead? Oh, what of the quiz? Mm. Um, Stuplum! Oh, well done, Stuplum. Well Only done. person so far to have got both questions correct. <clears throat> okay, cool. I mean, I'm saying that. I, I seem to have not filled in. So oh, no, no, that's right. Yes, because I only fill in where the answer is correct. Yes, Duplum. Excellent. Well Duplum's done, Duplum. on 60, Mickey's on 40, um, Tavi, Sean, and myself are on 20. So we're in the Admiral's quarters here, and uh, Sati and Picard discuss the current situation with Jadan and his possible sabotage. Uh, Sati admits that when Starfleet ordered her to the Enterprise ship uh, for this particular investigation, it was extremely... Uh, express state it was expressly stated that she and the captain would be equals uh, she was reluctant about that as her father judge aaron sati had always advised her to avoid partnerships picard expresses his admiration for the judge um and his decisions as uh, the judge was required reading when he was at the starfleet academy Sadie states that she and Picard will make quite a team. Will make quite a team. But question three completely has no relation to this scene. How many pips does Geordi have in this episode? So Geordi, does he have one gold pip, one black and one gold pip, 
two gold or one black, two gold. I will put that in chat. So A, one gold. B, one black, one gold. C, two gold. Or D, one black, two gold. And then again, you, you see the uh, the uh, effect of the ghost in the back of the card's head. Still there. <laughs> it's just peeping up. Yeah. It's peeping up behind his hairline. It's like hiding. It may, it's like that it, what now is... I've forgotten what the character is now. Or it may just be the fact that the best boys uh, probably hate having bald people on set. It's yeah. very hard to light a scene. Yeah. I know the feeling. I know the feeling well. Don't look at the top of my head and the purple and pink light. <laughs> Aww. I, I put a purple and pink light above me just so it makes my bald head look slightly more interesting. Fun facts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that sunburn would be the most annoying part, but yeah, it is. Own. It can be. Yeah, it can be. Uh, As we're on this lovely picture here, um, just worth mentioning, uh, Gene Simmons was in uh, like various films. You know, like a sort of relatively famous actress. A lot of the actors on this episode said it was really great working with her and such like, which is was great um and also uh, jonathan frakes and gene simmons were both in north and south yeah. um so yeah they they have sort of done other collaborations together um which that, i haven't previously appreciated that was me thinking gene simmons was the lead singer of kiss yeah that's what i was on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also her um her um, neck piece does that rem yeah, I'm not even going to say it. I'm just going to stop there. Don't stop. Stop, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. No, I've stopped already. It's fine. It's fine. Don't go there. I know yeah, where you... I just I've looked at this gone, picture I've and I just... I'm going to go. I just went, does that look like... Yeah, okay, that'll yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, that'll do, pig. That'll right, do. We're done. <laughs> that'll do, donkey. Um, Me what? with the little dangly bit right at the... Oh, okay. Sorry. Stop it. <laughs> sure. I didn't even notice it again the still frames okay we're moving on we're moving on moving on I will actually just talk about her a little bit actually because through this episode I was thinking god she reminds me I've seen her somewhere before like this performance I recognize I, I I look through IMDB and there's nothing that she's in that really resonated with me going oh that's where she's from and halfway through this episode I realized what it is and it's not that I recognised her per se, but she just really reminded me of... I've forgotten her name now. The the woman that plays M in James Bond. Uh, Jane D Dame Judy Dench? Judy Dench. Yeah, just her mannerisms and her voice. The sound of her voice in her mouth. Yeah, just really can, reminded me. Voice, yeah. Just really reminded me of Dame Judy Dench and James <laughs> Bond. <laughs> so anyway, I figured that one out, and I was just relieved then because I was just, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right next picture. Next picture. So we're in the observation lounge. Uh, Jenna. Go Your man has gone out the window, has he? Yeah, he, he's getting pretty close to the uh, the invisible screen there. The transparent aluminium, yeah. The, the transparent, yeah, alu aluminium. Sorry, aluminium. <laughs> no, no. Sorry, Do you please, know this please, whole please, um, this whole double scene though? Like, didn't it give you like a really uncomfortable feeling? I mean, there's nothing even later on to say that it was deliberate, but you had Sati sort of saying, "Oh, I was told I had to work with you, and I thought it would be diff difficult, but." We're going to make a great team. And then you've got this guy going, oh, I was skeptical about you, but you're going to be such a good asset. And it's just like, you really get a feeling they're being buttered up to be like shut yeah. in an oven and eaten later. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the old throne under the bus treatment. Mm. Yeah. So here we have Janestra and Worf uh, looking over uh, the people Jadan had contact with on the Enterprise. But the Klingon apparently did not make many friends. Narrowing the search of possible collaborators, Janestra compliments Worf on his thorough investigation. However, Janestra tells him that he and Sati initially suspected he could have possibly been a security risk, 
due to his father Merg having been declared a traitor and betrayed his people to the Romulans. Worf strongly declared that his father did not, uh, did or did not do, uh, what his father did or not did not do is no one's business but his own. Uh, and Genestra assures Worf that he has the Admiral's complete confidence. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of buttering up, but also a little bit like, you know, we still could be after you if it doesn't go our way. Worf. Uh, kind of, yeah. It's kind of when the manager brings you in and says, we need you to train some new staff. We're, we're doing this great new expansion and we have all these great new things coming. So train the staff and show them how to do your job. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. These things always end well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Worf assuredly states, if there is a conspiracy on board, I promise you I will find it. And with that, he begins arranging his interviews. He looks determined there, though, doesn't he? Yeah, very much so. Admiral Sati then begins an inquiry into all the personnel, starting with uh, Dr. Crusher. Um, uh, and basically he talks to all the people that Jadan had contact with. Then she questions a young crewman and medical technician, Simon Tarsus. So Ben senses great fear and guilt from Tarsus, as if some sort of lie is consuming him, and he believes they found Jadan's co-conspirator. He does a good performance, I think, this lad, in feeling, like, uh, uncomfortable... Uh, yeah, he's from a he, he's he's from a this guy Spencer Garrett, very active on Twitter, and I read up on him quite a bit. Uh, he's got hundreds of credits and mm. uh, some bi- some big, some small. He had a small role in Voyager as well, and uh, he also comes from an acting family. His mother was in all sorts of shows, had her own shows back in the fifties and sixties. Um, I think he's third or fourth generation actor, so very, very, very much grew up in the in the industry. I will say. His ears look a little janky. Yeah, but that's just the, I suppose, it's guest star, day player. They, they're not going to spend too much on it. But, um, yeah, the, the guy's been in all sorts of things. Hmm. He's also been in Star Wars, so he's one of those few people who've been in both wow, Star Trek and Star Wars. He's, he's been across it, yeah. I yeah. think he has something like 150 credits to his name, so he's... Uh, he's... Something in that order, yeah. He's yeah. he's in everything. Hmm. He's one of those, that guy in that thing, if you, if you see him, but... Yeah, it's like I recognised him, and then I looked at it, and he's been in like you know an episode of Twenty Four, an episode of CSI, an episode of Castle, an episode. Of, you know, yeah. <laughs> just one of these people you just see in the background, where just bit parts of everything you've ever seen. A Jim, Ca- Jim Carrey film, a Tom Hanks film, a Transformers film. He's been in all sorts of things. He kind of uh, looks a little bit like um, sort of Tom Hanks, actually. He's got like, mm. a similar look to um, his son. Um, also, that guy, the Betazoid guy, um, uh, Bruce French, um, was in a, various other Star Trek things. He was a, a comp and doctor in um, in the first Voyager episode. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, he, was, yeah. he was a sonar officer in Insurrection, the film, and oh, um, yeah. a, Vul- a Vulcan elder in Enterprise, the Andorian incident. So few few varied roles across the, mm. you know, both films and different series of um, of Star Trek. Mm, cool. Uh, so that was the end of Act Two. Uh, should we have the answer to uh, the third question? How many pips does Geordi have? Was it one gold, one black, one gold, two gold, one black, two gold? Uh, hopefully. I'm using YouTube shut down, so I haven't been even keeping a oh a, ta- a tab tab of the results. <laughs> hopefully, everyone said. D, one black, two gold. I definitely did not say that. No, I remember seeing a lot of Cs. I think there were a I lot of... T- I will tell you later, like, how many people said good or bad or whatever, but, um, yeah, I know I definitely did not. <laughs> I, I I wasn't sure if he was full lieutenant or lieutenant commander at this stage. I would have thought later, because, I mean, he starts as lieutenant junior grade. And That's what I thought. Well. And, you know, I was thinking he was just full lieutenant mm. at this stage. Okay. Fair enough. I gotta. I'm gonna have to. Um... I mean, there's only two times I can think of where um, mm. a promote. Oh, sorry, three times where a promotion was done on screen. Um, it's not a good picture, is it? Uh, yeah, uh, Warf in Generations, 
Um, oh, uh, so, so, so nobody got it right. <laughs> Gun Deep Space Nine, and uh, there was a third one that's gone out of my head. Anyway, it doesn't. Most most of them happen off screen, basically. They, oh, sorry, Tom Paris being re-promoted to lieutenant. Um, but other, yeah, so it's very rare. Most of the time, these promotions happen off screen. They just change pips, and that's it. Yeah, I I was surprised to see two gold and one black on him. Um, I didn't realize he had that many, but that's why that's why I posed it as a question. It's kind of I throw in a pips question every now and again when I notice a particular pip arrangement. Um, yeah, but that's, it's that's like true. Tuvok, he's, he's lieutenant, he's lieutenant commander, he's lieutenant again, then he gets promoted to lieutenant commander. It's like it's a mess. I think we might have covered this before, but you know, you know, whenever they have like the wrong number of pips, it's just because it's a piece of sweet corn, right? And they just need yeah, to yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I need a couple more bits of sweet corn on my yeah. And, and Chicote for the entire seven seasons of Star Trek Voyager wore Lieutenant Commander pips, never once referenced as a Lieutenant Commander. Wow. Uh, Lieutenant Commander can be first officer, but they never ever reference it. He's always just called. Well, there you go. So yes, nobody got that one right. I think that's the first, isn't it? Have I ever done a question where nobody got it right? Yeah, not that I um, can think <laughs> of off my head. So yeah. yeah. So the scores are the same, Steve Plunston. Scores the same. Is there anything else from Act Two that we need to cover? Um, nothing specific. I mean, some sort of general stuff around the fact that apparently this was the um, final episode to have music composed by. Ron Jones. Um, apparently, yeah, right. you had like issues or argued with Rick Berman and Peter Lauritsen. Um, so you know, they're, they're sort of constant. Uh, uh, you know, it just sort of caused issues. So yeah, he was he was eventually let go. Apparently, so I um, did notice there were a couple of rifts in this that sounded a bit first seasony. <laughs> so I don't know if that may be uh, what it is. They they wanted them sort of more cinematic, darker deeper tone and this one was yeah, a bit perhaps. fluty um but yeah <laughs> oh, i wonder like with this you know is the is the um klingon uh transporter pad background uh in this room why would they is that just like why why would they have that <laughs> does someone decide that for our courtroom this is the decoration we want hmm yeah, you think so. Well, uh, I mean, be the, the in unit. Well, the real world explanation is a blank wall would look like, you know, plywood. Yeah, I know. But they got to make yeah, it look have, have, futuristic yeah. somehow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's very easy to redress those things. You just change the colors, turn them upside down, turn them sideways. You can reuse them a mm. dozen times. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's quite cheap and easy way to make a set look different. Plus, it makes the um, the lighting people's job a lot easier when you can illuminate it. Like uh, when they made the Star Wars films, you know, those grills with the white lights coming through, you know, that wasn't a stylistic choice. They'd made the sets and then they realized it was really hard to light them running up and down the corridor because they couldn't have light stands. So they just cut holes in the walls to shoot light through it just so that they could shoot those long scenes much easier. Yeah. It's, uh, it's also not a coincidence a room like that is covered in carpet. All the walls are carpet, much like a, like a cinema screen. It's just, it's, just, it's just easier for sound. They don't have to worry about muffling things. They can just go in there and shoot. It's TV, do it quick. Are you not happy with your wine, Tamara? You're not, you're not happy with it? That's a sad face. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Tavana, you're on mute. <laughs> She's on the side, yeah. You there? She's not muted. I don't know what's going on. Mm. We can't hear you. Make check your connections. Keep talking and we'll tell you when you come back to us. <laughs> yeah. Check, check. You may need to check, drop out and drop in. You're plugged in. No. We can't, we can't continue. Extras, which we won't. Um, no. Also, Ensign Kellogg um, was named for the first time in this episode, apparently. No. Do you know, I thought Ensign Kellogg had been named previously. Yeah, we've yeah, talked about that's Ensign Kellogg. That's what said in a piece of trivia. We have yeah, talked about Ensign right. Kellogg, but uh, yeah, that might be and, retrospective. Um, and we know that Nellan Tor or Torre was, um, oh, I don't know, am I supposed to say the breed of the other aid of, Tor of Sati? You don't have that as a question, do you? No. Um, was a Delbian. Um, and I thought I'd look at, oh, what else has she been in? And it's like, has like four 
items on filmography like literally hasn't hardly been in anything um and hasn't been in anything for about 26 years so um was a short-lived mm. acting career apparently are you back tamikins no oh. Le- maybe leave and come back yeah that might be yeah, for the best yeah that might reset things Oh. Turn it off and on again. That's what you do with IT. That's the standard yeah. response, right? IT crowd. <laughs> she can she can hear us through the headphones, so it seems like they're mm. plugged in. Just a one way issue. Yeah. Yeah, just the, the mic wasn't syncing for whatever reason. Uh, Smiler Rainbow is uh, is uh, amused by her comment of the Libya address. Libya address. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's hey, quite I, a while I, ago, I, Smiler I Rainbow. Are you watching it live? <laughs> no, no, it was, just, it, was just, it was just a minute again. Smiler, for the record, I didn't say it. I just suggested it. <laughs> you there now? <laughs> no. Talk to us. Talk to us. Tell me to go into the set- settings and check the audio and just make sure the drop down is for your um, your headset. Um, right. Well, while she's... Uh... Sorry, Maz. You know. I was just going to say, also, there was apparently uh, some sort of scene deleted from the final episode. Oh. Um, which would have been in Sick Bay with uh, Gate, Gates McFadden, Michael Doran, Spencer Garrett, um, and some other background performers, Michael Braveheart and Bowman. Um, you know, that's according to, um, you know, the core sheet and stuff like that. So, yeah, we never saw that scene. But there you go. Well, I, I don't know. This would have been earlier in, in Jonathan's uh, uh, directing career. But obviously, he's known as two takes freaks. He's known as being very efficient, and he's known about just getting through scenes. And everyone's happy because all the people making the show know they get out two hours early. You know, they normally shoot yeah. for fourteen hours. They'll shoot for eleven. You know, he'll get them in and get them out. He'll and he won't he won't do forty takes, fifty takes. He'll do two, and he goes, "Yeah, one of those is fine," and move on to the next thing. But because of that, I believe he generally runs under time because he's efficient and he gets through things, and they just talk through the scene and. The pauses aren't there, so I think maybe it was they were they additionally added, you know, they added extra fluff scenes just to pad just it in out case. The time, just in case that the time ran under that they didn't have to do reshoots. I, if I was to take a guess, because he's known for being efficient. Hmm. Yeah, what? So you're saying it was a deleted scene because they made extra scenes in case yeah. it ran under, but then they. I'm saying it. it's it's possible, yeah, because mm. he's he's known for kind of getting through scenes a little bit yeah. too quick, and that obviously causes. You know, they know a page will be, you know, how many words will be how many minutes roughly, so, but they, they have to kind of overshoot when it's freaks, possibly. And it's just a guess. I don't know that for a fact. Mm. I can't find a picture of data now for, for ta- there you go, Tavi. There you ah, go. there he is. She can't say anything. That put a but, smile uh, on her face. But at least it gives us a smile look, doesn't it? It gives <laughs> her a nice smile. It's like mm. Tavi's about to get extra active in chat now, right? <laughs> Well, she... it's my only outlet to communicate it's not good <laughs> it's not good Aww. right so anyway onwards and upwards with act three so uh, we're in the ready room in Picard's ready room Picard refuses to restrict Tarsa's movements the ensign that's been accused of being a traitor uh, based solely on a betazoid's intuition he says he's not comfortable with the use uh yeah, he's not comfortable with the use of a Betazoid in this manner. And, and she calls him out on it, saying, you know, do you not use your Betazoid uh, in that way? Um, but because says not solely uh, based on her instinct, there would need to be some evidence. But, but before a consensus is reached, him and Sati get called to engineering by LaForge and Data. I just find it really odd that he was objecting to the use of a beta zoid. It's like, yeah, I know. You know she... If it's not to get to the bottom of a, a you know, a, a ship threatening um, conspiracy, like what the hell will you would you use a beta zoid? It's just ridiculous that he was moaning about that. And yeah. then she called him on it, and he admitted, "Oh yeah, actually. actually." But maybe I should rethink this approach. So you know, we hardly use mm-hmm. Diana at all, but maybe even the things we use her for, we shouldn't. Yes. Yes. And again, Marina. Um, originally she was given Tasha Yar as a role and they swapped it on her then they changed the roles around but she was going to be Tasha Yar originally and the role on paper for Tasha Yar was a lot better than what it ended up being Mm. and not only did they change it to the counsellor with a couple of words uh, you know and she just says I'm I'm sensing something you know and that's all she gets to say as I mentioned before anytime Whoopi Goldberg was available if she had a really meaty scene like in Measure of a Man talking about slavery or something they just give it to Whoopi or they go oh this one's too big let's see if we get Whoopi for this episode and they just sideline her and give mm. give all her lines to Whoopi so 
Yeah, not ideal. Uh, Tommy Kins has just re- worked out that Risling sucks because it's only 7%. Yeah. Where, where my ca- it is ca- a weaker one, unfortunately. Uh, that might be causing the problem. My Castillo di- del Diablo um, ser- uh, Cabernet oh. Sauvignon is a 13.5. Good news. Uh, Hot girls, Hot girls are waiting for us. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, in the chat, hot girls oh, are waiting for us. Just wow. click here. We're yes. so Smile lucky. Smile rainbow. We're so Do lucky. Magic. We are. We're, um... T- Tavi, what, what happened to uh, the grape? What did the grape say when it got stepped on? Nothing. It just let a le- oh, bollocks. Nothing. It just let out a little wine. <laughs> uh, I think you must get a. You need She's laughing like a seal, so as soon as you went for it. But uh, yeah, sorry, Tom. I, d- I did give you a, a tumbleweed bell nice. chiming. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well wind. deserved. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I, I like the shot um, because it's a rare moment where we get a shot from the sort of lowest power portion of the uh, tr- uh, the engineering section. We do see those shots a bit more in uh, Voyager because they like to show off mm. all the work they did with the catwalk and they, they made it look a bit better and they lit it better. But it, yeah, in TNG, it's very rare. It's a rare, um, rare shot you see because, because between the lighting and the way the set is painted, it, it's not a great shot. It doesn't look as uh, as epic. Uh, yeah, in Voyager, when they make it all silvery, it looks much nicer. Plus, uh, the, the core is smaller. They get better angles. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the radiation levels now drop low enough for them to enter safely, and their examination shows no sign of foul play. The explosion was caused by simple neutron fatigue along undetectable defect in the hatch cover that was installed during the ship's last refit, making the whole thing an accident that just happened to cons- coincide with the theft of the chamber's plans rather than because- actual sabotage. The, the warp core, which is, you know, a huge nuclear bomb that can in- instantly, you know, vaporize a ship is something where you just cut corners and don't check these things. Mm. And Geordi doesn't have a magical scanning device looking at it every day that would just pick that up in half a second if nope. there's any sort of crack in it. Apparently not. Oh, Tabikins was, uh, didn't realize that Mike died for some time and been wondering why, um, why everyone was talking over her and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was letting her join in in the conversation. Oh, sorry, Tommy. I'm we so... didn't say it. We thought you knew. Okay, never mind. It's, um, you got to try to figure it out because I miss. You, you, yeah, maybe you maybe just you. restart all together. It's just not. It's just not happening. Us, we will let you know uh, if we can hear you again. There will be cheers. Will go up if we hear you. <laughs> she's wiggling. She's wiggling her thing. Oh, 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 we, we heard, heard you then. Yeah, yeah the, the cable might be loose. Oh, yeah, uh, give, give I, it another wiggle. Let's say something. Oh, we, I yeah, definitely... I, 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 I think I, you have a loose cable there. Yeah, I definitely Some heard problems. something. I definitely we heard, heard something. We well, heard you for a few seconds and it's gone There couldn't possibly again. be anything on the, um, you know, on, on your end, Monty Bam. Like there's nothing you can no. change or affect when it comes to other people's mutedness. Yeah, I can. I checked her settings, and oh. uh, she's not muted. And I made sure she was turned up a bit. Um, oh. But no, there's nothing else. There's nothing else I can that do, kind. unfortunately. You missing a cable? <laughs> or are you just being rude? Oh. <laughs> Did she oh, unplug? Oh, if it half plugged out, it would only have the audio, but it wouldn't have the microphone. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> If it's if it's a if it's a um, she's playing not, with her uh, device. Not an audio cable, not a not a digital cable. She's giving us a little show. Yeah. <laughs> she's nah, sticking it in. Not hearing play. anything with those contacts. No. No, it's not. It's not going click click, or we're not hearing no. normal like mic pops. You check, know. Check 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 the other end of the cable. Where is it plugged into? <laughs> Wiggle that. Bless. It's just not happening, is it? It's just yeah, not happening. Yeah. The port either. Sorry, sorry, Tommy. Try it. Try. I mean, are you on a laptop there? Try unplugging it and changing the device to the laptop to, um, mic. At least we'll be able to hear you then. 
Steve Plum says, wiggle your prom. I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, Mickey says, check where cable goes into the PC or mobile, which is what I was thinking. <laughs> Wujon says, do you miss me that much, my love? I think that was to do with your slightly uh, rude... Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear i don't know how we get ourselves into these things sometimes you know it seems like such an innocent stream that we start and it's, it's, it's the labia dress <laughs> it just, the, dre- the dresses the red dress has done us in again i don't know um i blame sean yeah <laughs> it's always best when anything's going wrong in this stream to blame sean I think that's yeah, that works. standard, that. standard Yeah, the response. rude stuff, normally we can blame Tavi, but yeah. I think um, Sean precipitated it this time. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Me, me and my... Although I like, I like being on a dark background. It looks like I've got no shoulders. It's true. <laughs> my floating head. I, hold on, actually. Hold on. I can do the... Uh... I, I... Oh. That's the wrong one. Good evening, uh, Gujan. Hope you're well. Oh, <laughs> Good evening. Uh, the beard is in the house. It's always good mm-hmm. to hear from the beard. The Viking. The Viking. <laughs> Can, Can we, we make, make a blame, blame sh- Sean song? So, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, I reckon, yeah, I reckon we can. <laughs> That'll be in the intro next week, don't you worry. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where was I? I've... I've Oh, yes, we were back in engineering and the explosion, uh, it turned out it wasn't sabotage. But question four, we talked about um, this was all caused by the Enterprise's last refit. But where did the Enterprise get its last refit? Was it A, the Earth Station McKinley, B, Utopia Planitia, C, Starbase One, or D, San Francisco Fleet Yards? Where did Enterprise pick up this defect from its last refit? Was it Earth Station McKinley, Utopia Planitia, Starbase One, or San Francisco Fleet Yards? Maybe. Bit of a guess. So if I just move down on the black background so you can't see the rest of the uniform, I can do my Holly impression, Red Dwarf. Yes. Dead Dave. (laughs) Everyone's dead, Dave. It's an April, May, June, July, and August fool. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a drill. That's a drill. That's a drill. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, next picture. I'm going to finish this act if it kills me. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Right. So, anyway, it's the end of the episode, right? We've finished. They've found the person that shared the information with the Romulans and the the warp core breach has ended up not being anything but a defect. So we're done. But no, unfortunately, it's not the end of the episode. Now, in the observation lounge, Satya and Genestra are unconvinced and still believe Tarsis was a co-conspirator. Uh, since they don't think Jadan could have come aboard the Federation flagship and accomplished what he did, without some inside help. Uh, Another inquiry against Tarsus is launched, and this time open to the public. Picard informs him that he has assigned Riker to represent him. But Tarsus says he's done nothing wrong. It's hard hard to believe in a ship with a thousand people on it. I think about any modern workforce with a thousand people. They don't have any sort of HR department. You know, the... Get the first officer, you know, no legal training. That's not his job, but you know, we'll just yeah. throw him in. But. Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, all, all the negotiations and different diplomacy he's got, that were required. He's got previous though. He's got experience, so um, yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. Tavi's still working on her uh, issues, and to to no to no avail. Uh, yeah, so... Sorry, Tavi, I think you've got a loose cable somewhere, so it's probably just the headset has given up the ghost. We'll have to do, like, a test in advance next week. We, we will. We'll, we'll do a test. Sorry, I'm just messing up my screens here. There we go. Uh, 
so he's bar- barraged with numerous accusations to try to establish his guilt, including a lie that the explosion was caused by corrosive chemicals that are only stored in sick bay, which only he had access to. But the exposure of the lie, Tarsus himself tried to uh, the exposure of a lie that Tarsus himself tried to keep hidden and the fact that it fo- he put false information on his parentage uh, in his academy application form, stating that his paternal grandfather was Vulcan when, in fact, he was Romulan. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I need that kind of music on my little soundboard thing here, don't I? Can, can I just say Tavi on her violin? Oh no! Uh, Sad the, times. The, the the actor Spencer, he's on Twitter. He's great fun, you know, and he, he will interact with you if you follow him. And on, I did on one occasion. He was posting something, and I just went, "Don't listen to this man. This man is a Romulan, or don't trust him. This man is a Romulan." <laughs> but he did actually reply to me when I did. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a sense of humor it's about funny. it. Even thirty, even thirty years later, like in all the shows he's done, he's still a big Star Trek fan. So uh, he, yeah, you Brilliant. can have a chat with him he, he, if you want to have a little bit of a buzz with him. He, he will actually interact with you. It's like once you're on Star Trek, right? You. you you're a Star Trek person, a personality. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like, one of those things. It, it's amazing. He can still do conventions today if he wanted. Yeah, yeah. If he, if he wanted, wanted to things. turn up, he'd be a popular person in a convention, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he had a small yeah, role in small, small role in Voyager he, he, where he, I don't think he even he had any lines, but like this is the one everyone remembers him from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, Yes, they 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 announce he's 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 descended from a Romulan. Overwhelmed, Riker steps in and advises Tarsus to invoke the seventh guarantee of the Constitution of the United Federation of Planets, which I guess is a kind of a right to remain silent type of affair. So he says he's invoking it to avoid self-incriminating himself. It's very sad to see the poor lad. He's all. Beside yeah. himself. Very sad. And that's the well, end of Act what, 3. I don't know what age the actor was, but like, you know, they say he's he's a crewman and he wants to be out in the world, so he, in theory he's no older than 19 or 20, so... Yeah, he's done the whole skip Starfleet Academy to become an officer type thing, and he's just enlisted and he's put himself out into the world. So yeah, he's still a very young man. Uh, right, so the question then... Where did the Enterprise get its last refit that installed a dodgy warp core hatch? Or whatever it was, with some nano failures. Was it A, Earth Station McKinley, B, Utopia Planitia, C, Starbase 1, or D, San Francisco? Uh, San Francisco Fleet Yards. It was A, Earth Station McKinley. Tavona's saying, wasn't it Starbase McKinley? No. Uh, star, yeah, Starbase McKinley, our station McKinley. It's the, it's the, it's the McKinley dry dock. That's uh, the mushroom, the mushroom one. No, I, no, 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 I, no, no. The one that looks like a kind of spider that goes over the Enterprise. Oh, is it that one? Oh, yes, it's that it's one. Just, okay. Uh, uh, I get mixed up and I somehow got it right. Never mind. Um, it's, not, it's not the one with the magic doors. Not the one with the magic doors that rescale themselves to... Uh, it somehow is the size of a constitution and a galaxy class. Oh, yes, it's that one, yes. It's, it's this thing. Yeah, okay. It looks like kind of like a spider going over the Enterprise. Yeah. That's uh, McKinley. There you go. So anybody that got A, congratulations. Uh, you've got some more TNG points. Reed Plenty described it well, the red spidery thing. Yeah. Yay! As soon as you showed that, I was like, Ugh. it gave me the heebie-jeebies, like, when you see Chris. <laughs> yeah. I literally had a shiver go down my spine. Well, the Deep Space Nine is kind of like that. It does look kind of like something that could be crawling around. Yeah, I guess it looks kind of more like a really cool crustacean, though, than like an, uh, an arachnid. But Yeah, it's um, very much like that, isn't it? 
you know. Tabby says she might have to restart her laptop, so um, if she disappears in a moment, then that's Yeah, fine. give it a go. Or, yeah. or just, uh, your laptop should have its own mic. You can just, in StreamYard, yeah, take off your, in um, StreamYard, go to settings yeah, she, and change. She already tried, she already tried that, I think. Did she, oh, did she, she come back in? No, uh, she tried that. We'll see. Yeah. Well, if there's a, she's been trying multiple webcams mm. and with a headset, so there could just be like a graphics card conflict thing where two different things are. For trying example, to use the sound card and it's frozen. So yeah, restart and probably fix it. I could go like this, and hopefully you can still hear me. Yeah. But uh, very echoey. different sound. <laughs> but now, oh yeah, for you guys it'll be a different sound. But uh, of course, to, to home to to the stream, it still sounds exactly the same. <laughs> uh, okay. But anyway, to uh, to you guys, um, it would be, yeah, it would be, oh, what have I done? Ruth asks, why can you never see Bejor when the camera pans over DS9? You can. I may be wrong, but I think the answer is because it used to be next to Bejor, but then when they had, um, they discovered the wormhole early on, they had yeah. to do this whole thing where they moved it quite yeah. far to go to the mouth wormhole. They, they did. You it's got maneuvering thrusters. You can see it in Emissary, and you can see it in the alternate universe episodes because, or some of the alternate, the oh, earlier yeah. ones. Yeah. But yeah. it's under Cardassian control. It's in orbit of Bajor. So they never they discovered the wormhole. They didn't discover the yeah. wormhole, so it was yeah. left orbiting Bajor. Uh, but somehow, even though Be Bajor was one of the, the three main uh, founders of the Alliance, somehow they they take over Terak Nor, and I guess they fly it somewhere else because. But yeah, you do you do see it in Emissary in one or two of the alternate uh, through the Looking Glass episodes, I believe. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, all but it's Bajor. about it's about three hours of a journey uh, to get from Bajor to the uh, to the uh, wormhole. Yeah, I think Miles has on occasion complained about the length of time it takes to get to Bajor from the station and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but they never really say the three hours by impulse, three hours at Wolf War Five, and anyway, three true. hours. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so onwards to Act 4. Act 4. And picture. Here we go. Okay, so we're in the observation lounge. And Picard sees Worf instructing several security officers and investigation into Tosses' background. He's like really wants him worked over. Picard tells him he feels that Sati is engaging in a drumhead trial. A xenophobic witch hunt. I, I will say this is good character building for Worf to be so overzealous. Um, a, because he's constantly being uh, held back. You know, he's like fire phasers and he's always been told no. no. But also, um, you know, he has to kind of prove how much he hates Romulans and, you know, how far distance he is from Romulan loving that he has to be overzealous and anything Romulan. So... Nice bit of character building in the writing. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it, yeah, it, it is. It is, and and you can see him. It's nice to see him in his in his him environment there, sort of leading his security yeah. team and issuing mm, orders, yeah. and rather than like yeah, just being the yeah, it, it, it being we, ignored. We, <laughs> we forget he has he has three separate roles. He's ops, he's tactical, and he's communications. Okay, now mm. communications, relatively simple job, but there's actually three different consoles on the horseshoe yeah uh yeah so there we go uh so picard yes so and of course uh picard goes in to describe what a drumhead trial is uh where they you know sorry on a, on i meant a, to say security tactical and comms no, yes that's uh, that's harry was ops and ops data and comms, yeah excuse me. um yeah, so, yeah, what a drumhead trial is, where they would have a trial on a battlefield, you know, basically they found some people that they had accused of deserting or something, and to, you know, make a makeshift table, they would use a drum, one of the battle drums, as a as a table. Um, so they became known as drumhead trials, and quite often the person was found guilty before, you know, if you come up against a drumhead trial, you were going to be whipped, lashed, hung or something, something bad was going to happen to you, <laughs> you know? yeah it was kind yeah, of like I, a fait accompli and it was almost used as a threat to just control the ranks more than anything else but yeah yeah You're, you'll be in a drumhead trial I, I'd imagine it's a very much an American Civil War kind of thing by the yeah way. kangaroo court would be another uh, saying mm. similar similar connotations that, that sort of thing 
Um, Worf thinks that Tarsus lies on his application form. That makes him as guilty as the Klingon. But Picard points out, but th- that that's his only crime. There's no evidence of any other crimes here. You know, in the end, Picard... Yeah, all, all, all the- that's just, he just gets disparaged for that. That's it. He just gets kicked out. The worst yeah. that can happen to him. Yeah, so they're they kind of like, yeah. Uh, yeah, just. But anyway, Picard ends up walking out, telling Worf there's something very wrong here, and he doesn't like what they have become. Uh... You do see um, Worf security offs in a couple of episodes, but it's also a redress of the same set they're using for the interrogation room. So oh, is it? It, is yeah. kind of weird. it is kind of weird as a department head, he'd bring them all up to the senior conference round to have a conversation, not not that they wouldn't have their own. You'd imagine security staff would have some sort of gym and shooting range and, you know, area of their own, you know, much <laughs> like Elite Squad are in Voyager. But no, then just go up to the conference room. It's fine. Do you think there's a booking system for the observation lounge? <laughs> there has to be, doesn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Like Wolf's having that. his security meeting in there. Do you think you know? Like I don't know. You, Riker you, you, turns you up with I don't know some some his senior staff, and he's like, "Oh, sorry, uh, no, no, you, no, you, no, it's fine." I, I put <laughs> we'll it in the other calendar. Room. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, we got the wrong calendars. I'm it sure must be I a, put a it in there yesterday. Ranking system. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you can book it, and if other people of equal or lower rank want it, they can't have it. Yeah. If somebody of higher rank wants it, they trump you. Yeah. Let us know in chat. Have you got any like experiences with office room booking systems? Because well, the, the bank it, I work for it used to annoy the crap out of me. The bank I work for uh, the building we used to have it had about a dozen rooms all on the one floor. And the CEO would just randomly just take them over. So we could have like, and they could be reconfigured different ways and stewards. So there could be room for a hundred people or a dozen small rooms, depending on which way you open and close them. And occasionally the CEO would just take over the whole floor and they mm. go, oh, you're going to Cabantili, which was like half an hour in a taxi. So they'd send us all, you know, like you'd have a hundred people booked to do training or something. And they'd send us all like, you know, 40 minutes down the road, 40 minutes back. Fish just because at ten, a 10 minutes notice, the CEO would just decide they wanted the room. <laughs> oh, great. Cool. All right, we're yeah. gone. Bye. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, Picard's left and he's gone off to meet Tarsus in his quarters. And he establishes that he was indeed lying on his application, but that was his only misdeed. Turns out that they both sat under the same tree in Starfleet Academy. Um, but where Picard went on and did the Starfleet Academy and became an officer of Sarsis, decided that he didn't want to go that way and he wanted to get into space straight away and become a, an enlisted man and do his own thing. And the exact same tree, or presumed to be the exact same tree, uh, Picard and Boothby have a conversation at later. Yes. And then... In Discovery, in the 32nd century, when they come back to Earth, they all get a photo at the, the, the bottom of a huge tree, which again is implied to be the exact same tree. Wonderful continuity, yeah. Perfect, love it. Love it, right. Uh, and, and then for Discovery to get continuity right is a rarity, so I really feel the need to call it out. It's good, yes. It's good to see. Uh, Picard confronts Sati in, in, in his observation lounge and demands that the hearings be put to rest. He reveals that he knows that the so-called evidence of tampering was a complete lie of fabrication and threatens to go over her head and complain directly to Starfleet Command. Sati rebuffs him there and reveals that she's been in full contact with Starfleet Command since the beginning of the investigation and fully approves of her method and they fully approve of her methods in fact admiral of starfleet security will arrive in time to witness the next and all subsequent hearings until the conspiracy is solved in other words the interrogation will not stop they will be expanded everyone will be interrogated as say he turns to leave the ready room because tells the admiral that what she is doing is unethical and immoral and he will fight it Sadie tells the captain he should do what he must, and so shall she. But question number five, Tavikin's still not back. What what has happened to our Tavikins? I oh, know it's sad. I, I, I we were trying to stall, but we've really gotta we really gotta keep going. Keep um, going. Keep going. Sorry, Tavik, we do miss you if you're watching we, on your phone. We or do something. miss you. Please come back. 
It's not the same. It's not the same. But question number five. What is the name of the Admiral of Starfleet Security that is on his way? Is it A, Thomas Henry, B, Nakamura, C, William Ross, or D, J.P. Hansen? What's the name of the Admiral that's on his way? Thomas you know? Henry, Nakamura, William Ross, or J.P. Hansen? It's kind of like, I mean, I know um, Admiral whatever his face is might be a, a perfectly nice Admiral, um, but it gets me onto like a little bit of a sidetrack thing about the fact that in Star Trek, in Next Generation specifically, but in, in some other Star Trek as well, a lot of Admirals are like, really mad or immoral or they do something incompetent douchebags uh it's like <laughs> it's like this um you know bad admiral trope i guess mm. um you know there was all sorts from like the, the the ones that wanted to take um you know data's daughter away to sati here to um uh you know the uh, admiral uh pressman who um uh you know, got a whole crew need, killed. Yeah, um, broke, a, Admiral, broke a treaty preventing war. Admiral Doherty from uh, Insurrection, who um, you know sort of collaborated with those um, yeah. genocide, basically. Yeah, uh, Jameson, the guy who took that like anti-aging serum yeah. thing, and um, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of them. It just oh, and then the guy from like Homefront and Paradise Lost. Starfleet um, is run to the core, basically. Like, oh like, yeah, it's, it's in a military like, coup. Yeah, all heroic, and then you get to Admiral, and you suddenly become a completely corrupt asshole. That's, That's like, because comes across. senior management sucks. That's why. Because <laughs> yeah. senior no management, senior management your, uh... don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> and they don't know a good thing when they're looking it in the face. So, well, in, in order to derive no, no senior management, you have to be backstabbing, manic, megalomaniacal, yeah. generally yeah. a bad person, or else you never make it that far. That's right. The yeah. nice people right. don't screw other people over and don't. Ted don't Danson just... in Orville. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they just they just don't take the, they just don't cut people down to get ahead of them the same way and yeah that's what happens happens in every organization always problems with admirals just thought I'd point that out yeah that is true <laughs> uh, I think Tavikins is back but I... you're showing as muted maybe if you unmute the mute button can we hear you let's have a look go on let's try it let's give it a go she's unmuting can we hear you testicles one two. No! Oh, I can't hear ya. God damn it. Sad times. Uh, we're just going to have to look at your beautiful face and yeah, read your we'd text. I'd rather have you here than not here. Yeah, it's better. Talk by text. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have to look into that after this stream. Yeah. She can type. She's got great fingers. So yeah. we're all good. We're all good. That thing is. Oh, I got different colours on this week, you know. Not the red of last week. I went black for Halloween. <laughs> oh. Um so what did we just do? Uh we just had the question, didn't we? We just had a question. We did yeah. have a question. I yeah. better start writing down people's responses. Yeah, I? get your, get your answers in chat. Get your answers in chat. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just saw Mickey's response there. Um Bob. J.P. Hansen. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we, it made yeah. me laugh. I'll give you. I'll give you one of these. There you go. Uh, okay. Later, Picard is on the bridge. Look who he's. Who's he stood next to? Who? Who's that? No. No. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay, we won't go on to that picture. Is it lower? No. 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 Nobody cares about that picture today. No. <laughs> Should I know? Ah. Data. Data. Oh, what a pretty face. Look at that nose. Sorry, I'm just trying to put voice to you. <laughs> oh, look at that beautiful hair. Yeah. Oh, we should see his profile. He's so can I, sexy. Can I... <laughs> Can I just say, nice <laughs> continuity. Um, that's one of the security officers that Worf was talking to, and Worf's obviously oh, not here. on the bridge because he's dealing with the other stuff. 
nice continuity that they put that in, and also there appears to be a bit of a broken bulb at the back of the set there. It's not giving out the right way. Just well, above here. his head. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, just directly above his head. No, 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 on the, oh, here. Uh, behind the console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think in the middle here, it's not bright enough. Uh... Yeah, something went wrong there. Okay. Um, but I, li- I like the fact that they use one of the security staff to cover him because obviously he's got bigger yeah, fish Yeah, he's, he's, he's busy. He's a busy guy. He's in demand today, you know. He's here, there, and everywhere. He's busy rounding up the Enterprise crew and locking them up and uh, questioning them and, you know, getting, how, them, how getting often... them to report on each other and, yeah. Well, how those... often do you see him not on the bridge? It basically yeah, I know. never happens. Yeah, no, no, never happens. You know, but there's a reason in story why he's not on the bridge, even though he's on the ship. I just, I, I, yeah, well, well written. Good, well, well, uh, good continuity. Uh, I don't know how he spots these things, Devon. It's, it's, it's his skill, it's his superpower. Um, yeah. It's when you sit on the freeze frame for 30 seconds, it's only then I notice it. Yeah. Uh, later, Picard is on the bridge distracted when Data informs him that the warp engines have been restored. And they are ready to begin to re- the restart sequence. Uh, going over to sit in his command chair, Riker asks Picard if he's all right. And Picard tells his first officer that he's fine. He's just a little preoccupied at the moment. I know that feeling, Picard. I know that feeling. Uh, and I, I do like this um, this picture here. I like the way it's not a, it's not a Riker maneuver, but you know how Riker just loves to lean on other people's stuff. You know, whether yeah, it's his yeah. ass on somebody's console or his foot next to somebody's, you know, here he is. And he does this quite a lot, leaning on Picard's armrest. Hey, <laughs> wait, wait, Black Box is back. Yay. Um, yeah, the story with Riker leaning is well documented. He broke his back moving furniture before he made it. Yeah. And um, the other thing is, again, in the most recent episode of um, Lower Decks, Ransom is teaching the staff, or uh, teaching the crew, how to do the Riker maneuver. Which um, which one? You know, the the the, the sitting down in the a chair. Oh oh, oh 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 yeah, getting in and out of a chair, chair. by swinging your yeah. leg over it. Mm. Yeah. So, he has uh, a yeah. number of maneuvers, so you got to be. You know. But it's the one where he gets it. Actually, that's you, what you she said. Could, you, 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 <laughs> if we, you probably have the video on YouTube of him getting in and out of chairs. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so she's, uh, unfortunately, because of his outspokenness against them, Picard receives a summons delivered by Nayland Tor, Sati's assistant, to appear tomorrow morning at 900 hours before the committee for questioning. Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, you would disrespect a captain on his own bridge like that. And, she you know, delivers expect, it with you know, relish, you know. doesn't she? She's just like, ha ha, you're in trouble. <laughs> doesn't even bother calling them off the bridge as to speak in his ready room. Doesn't ask for permission to enter the bridge. No. I think I think he can be thrown in the brig for just walking on the bridge without permission. You know, he, uh, yeah. if I was captain, that would go down a lot differently. Mm. I think by the look on his face, he's expecting this. <laughs> Yes, he was expecting a fight, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. The chick oh, I, I was. Just realized, uh, I, I just realised why that screen is lit differently. It's actually a telly in the back with a tape running. I just it didn't. I just see it now. Sorry, the, looks like what they did there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was not a very nice person, Tavana. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had like a uh, well haughty. But I put I put somewhere. I was like, God, she is so haughty. Like haughty, haughty, haughty. <laughs> haughty, haughty, haughty. I mean, like her face the whole time was like, yeah, it's like she was sucking on a lemon. I'm gonna pull up a picture. Uh, uh, find the actual picture of her delivering that news because I didn't select it because it annoyed me but now you talked about it it annoyed um, you i'm gonna find well, her it her face annoyed you her face just offended me yeah yeah she's got a pretty pretty nope. annoying face i must say there it is <laughs> i don't know just annoying face <laughs> sorry love i'm sorry yeah. you're probably a wonderful actress I'm, imagine trying to speak down to the captain of the flagship on his own bridge yeah i just yeah, to stretch credulity for me, yeah. no, you wouldn't do that. No. Don't care who you are. As, Nobody does that. As Stu Plum says, is it's a bridge too far. Uh, he gets a. Oh, that's a, yeah. You need a. 
There you go. <laughs> no, oh. no, that gets into dumb. <laughs> oh, love it. I like it. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Oh, so that was the end of Act Four. Great. Uh, so, question number five then. What was the name of the Admiral from Starfleet Security? Was it Thomas Henry, Nakamura, William Ross, or J.P. Hansen? Um, Bob. Nope. I don't know if it's like I guessed or something, but can you, oh, can you see it? Uh, hang on, I might need to make you big. <laughs> Admiral Henry. <laughs> you put that in big It's like thing, so isn't much it? bigger than any of the, and I've got face palm. Oops, down here. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, that's what my notes look like. But yeah, I made a big note of that. I somehow thought it might be a question. <laughs> well, you weren't wrong. You were not wrong. You were not wrong. Yeah, Hansen was the 709's grandmother. Um, mm -hmm. What were the other ones? I, I, I can't quite Nakamura. remember. Nakamura was in charge of the... Was he in charge of another uh, Galaxy class ship? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, he was in early TNG. Yeah. It, uh, was he in charge of the, the Akimoto or... The Nakamura, Arado? I think, was... Uh, he was the one. I can't remember. William yeah. Ross. William Ross was from the. Yeah, was the um, the wartime admiral from Deep Space Nine. And Hang on. Nakamura. Uh, I do know. Admiral Nakamura. Nakamura is no good things. He's the one who tells them to go to the neutral zone. And says Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Oh, thank you, Ruth. That guy. Ruth for the rescue. He's that guy. Yeah, I know what he looked like. I just couldn't remember what he did. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, thank he was you, in. Ruth. He was. He was in the measure of a man. Phantasms and all good things. Okay. Yes. Nice. Uh, I tried to pick some good, uh, admirally names they could have been. <laughs> um. Hmm. And uh, of the three episodes he was in, The Measure of Man and Phantasms are very much data episodes. All the things. Oh, uh, well, we'll look forward to them eventually. Well, one of us will. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we passed <laughs> Measure of Man, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah we don't Measure of Man. Yeah. 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 But we've still got Phantasms to go. Oh, did we do that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we um, can, uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, we, we, we like it. Uh, no, season seven, episode six, no. Yeah, we like the actor so much, we bring him back every four years. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> uh, right, so on to Act 5. Is there anything else, Maz, actually, from Act 4 that we needed to... No, nothing specifically. Most of my comments are for the end now. As I pour I myself some more blood wine. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say, I know that costume was reused somewhere, but I can't remember where. Uh, I it's, mean... It's pretty oh, I don't know, basic, actually. isn't it? I don't recognise it. Um, but, you know, just sort of That's reinforcement, you know, we were saying earlier about the Salem witch trials and, um, you know, some of those like communist trials from Senator McCarthy. Um, that, that tactic that they 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 do, in fact, I think that's probably coming up because this is the biggest uh, act, um, but where they, you know, they give false information to try mm. and put the question, person being questioned under pressure is the similar sort of tactics of trying to trick people into incriminating themselves even if they're not guilty it's just dirty dirty tactics dirty 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 i i was yeah so we've come far enough in the episode i was also going to say i don't know if they were thinking about this at the time but uh when george k was young he was interred as like a five-year-old in a prison camp so because he was japanese american when world war ii came along Armed soldiers came up the house, kicked them out of the house. They lost their house. They lost their business. They only were allowed to bring enough clothes to fill a suitcase each. And they were thrown into a camp. And when they came out, they had absolutely nothing left. Mm. And he does a show called Allegiance. He's bringing it to the West End. If any of our UK colleagues want to see George Decay in action, he's nearly 90, so see him now or never see him at all. Um, but uh, he is coming to the West End shortly, and um, wow. yeah, it's a really, really bad story, and it's not well publicized. But the, just anyone who is Japanese American, despite however long they were there, you know, if they're first or second generation, they just dumped them all into these camps and uh, and just left them to rot for the duration of the war, just because of the way they looked. So because they were related, yeah. So. Mm. And uh, something I never knew about, other than George Decay publicizes it quite a lot, and as I said, the whole show Allegiance is all about it. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah, if if anyone's in and it can get to London, I would maybe suggest seeing can you get tickets to that. Cool. 
Right, on to Act 5. The last act for this show. Uh, we are, the Act 5 opens with this shot as a reused shot of the Enterprise and a, uh, an Excelsior-class ship that's delivering the, the, the Admiral, Admiral, Admiral Henry. Um, but this is for no points. This is just in case anybody happens to know. Does anybody know the name of this ship? The Excelsior class ship. Anyone other than Mazza McBob? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm going to guess Sutherland, but that's a good guess, Sean. Because I know in in, um, in yeah the the Sutherland is uh, Excelsior D Space Nine, but uh, maybe it's the same one. Uh, Anybody else in chat? Anybody want to give a guess? Come on, stupid. Rutledge. Roof. What do you reckon? Oh no! Oh no! Uh, sorry, Tavona's just uh, messaging chat that apparently her laptop no longer has the minimum system requirements for Windows Yikes. Eleven. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can try uninstalling your your uh, your graphics card and e reinstalling it. It's an operating system issue, then, right? Yeah, that's a bit of an eek moment there. A bit of an eek. Yeah, moment. Sorry, might, yeah. Anyway, okay, yeah. Your your system needs some sort of a reset there. Uh, you can try uninstalling the sound card and reinstalling it. Uh, yeah, it might work. Did you say this is the Excelsior class ship? It's an Excelsior class nice ship. Out there, Sean. Straight in oh, the sorry. Straight sorry. in the microphone. <laughs> Then I don't think I do know actually what this one is. You don't know. Um, I'll tell you why. My notes talk about the fact that there was an Excelsior class ship and an Oberth class ship. There was. I didn't um, have I a picture only, of the Oberth class ship. I only know the identification of the Oberth class ship, not the Excelsior class yes. ship. Yes. I, I found out yesterday. I was yesterday days old. I will old, go back. I will go that back. That the Oberth class was never mentioned in dialogue. Up until no, the most, neither most of them recent... were mentioned in dialogue. Well, the Excelsior oh, was. Because the, the, the USS Excelsior was the first of the class, but the but the, the Obert was never mentioned, and it was only mentioned for the first time in the most recent episode of Lower Decks. Oh, right. I thought I meant Diana, like, sort of... these two ships in this episode were never mentioned in. in oh, okay. Yeah, no, I just, just meant had to oh, infer oh, what they are from other oh, sources. Oh, I see. See what you mean? No, but the Oberth class, they never refer to it as the Oberth right. class in dialogue uh, ever up until, like, as I said last week. This is the Oberth class ship down here at the bottom of the picture. That's what we're talking about. Right. And what model was that originally from? What was that? Um. Uh, I did Star Trek 3, I think. Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. And what was the name of the ship? Oof, you're asking now. I am. Uh, <laughs> Anybody in chat? Uh, Anybody uh, know what the ship no, was called know. in Star Trek 3? I have no idea. Oh, was it the Grissom? Hey, you pulled it out of the back of your brain box. <laughs> Chief Sean, 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 yeah, Sean no. came in clutch. <laughs> Oh, I like how I didn't know, and then I knew. Uh, it's great, isn't it, when that happens? Deep them called it the NFI. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I'll tell you an, an interesting thing about the uh, Excelsior. They they added bits onto it for generations so that they could blow them off, so that yes. they wouldn't damage the model. And then they glued them on so well they couldn't take them off afterwards. So every every time you see it after generations, it has that what's called the class three excelsior style yeah it's the wider um, uh, um primary hull doesn't it and they got like yeah because uh, it's got cause the sometimes flares. They re <laughs> it's got the flares the flares yeah so what, sometimes when they refit it they call it a class one class two class three but mm. it's still the same you know it's you know so you can have a galaxy class three but it's still a galaxy class it's not a, a different mm. class of ship it's a thing i remember the first uk um frigate i went on during Navy days was HMS Boxer and it was a broadsword class ship, but it was stretched. It was the, it was longer than tradition. Anyway, I don't know why I said that. But anyway, this is the Grissom. Yes. It, 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 it was, it was, it was the limousine class. It was the sorry. limousine version of the broadsword class uh, type 23 well, that, that frigates. It was the Grissom in Star Trek three, right? Yes. But yes. um, this um, this one is actually the USS Cochrane. Cochrane, yeah. Cochrane, very good. It has different registry uh, numbers mm. that we can see in HD, but you don't actually Apparently see a name. you can only derive it from um, information from, like, the Star Trek Next Generation companion book. Uh, but this, this ship, 
the Excelsior yeah, crash. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. I'll tell you, and, and nobody said it in chat. Well, actually, no, they did. Uh, you know, if I was giving points out, I'd give them to Stuplum because uh, the name of the ship's never mentioned. Uh, nobody knows. <laughs> It's no well, I already NFI. Said that. <laughs> NFI. No, no effing idea what that ship is. It's one. It's one of those rare times that a ship turns up next to the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. We've got no clue what it is, but it's an Excelsior class ship. So there you go. Don't know what one, but it's there anyway. Cool. Right. So we're on to the final act. Uh, so now we're at Picard's interrogation. Uh, after being asked his name and rank and all the sort of standard things, Picard asks to make a statement before they start. Sati declines, saying he will have a chance later. But Picard points out that it is right under the you know Starfleet Charter that he should have his right to say something first. So in the end, she begrudgingly agrees. Picard attempts to appeal to Sati's sense of reason to convince her to end this charade, pointing out that there is no substantive evidence against the ensign. Um, have we become so fearful and cowardly just because a man carries the bloodline of an enemy? Uh, apparently they have, because <laughs> she continues anyway. Uh, he's met with... Thorough and borderline irrelevant nitpicking of his competency and loyalty to Starfleet and the Federation. First, Sae brings up that Picard had violated the Prime Directive a total of nine times since they were given the command of the Enterprise, to which Picard has stated that he was aware of, um, that he should have been aware of since his reports have been to Starfleet and are fully documented about the circumstances of each violation. I don't know if we... Is, is there anything recorded anywhere of the nine occasions he's uh, ditched the Prime Directive? Oh, it feels like something we probably discussed about, you know, maybe six months ago. Mm -hmm. um, but no. I oh, well, who, who watches The Watchers would be one uh, with the Mintakins and he brings mm -hmm. them on board. Uh, yeah, every, every time, every time he a finds a, a fancy to a woman, <laughs> makes, makes her up. <laughs> Come see my ship. <laughs> Probably a few archaeological digs where he took things he didn't mean to. Yeah. The um the first contact one it does with feel Riker like a lot more. lost on a planet. Yeah. Um nine. <laughs> There's obviously some that he didn't record. He didn't report well, well, nine, nine that they know of, right? Yeah. Nine, 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 nine that's career. right. <laughs> he was in charge yeah. of the um uh, the stargazer for something like eighteen years. Um, because he was only, yeah. I think, well, oh, yeah, there must have been a butler. It, it be beta cannon, but he was lieutenant commander, and then everyone else got killed, and then he became captain at lieutenant commander. But it was a less important ship, so. But he 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 went from lieutenant commander to commander to captain all the time in the eighteen years. But so um, some of them could have happened in the stargazer period, possibly. Well, it must be nice to be promoted. And is it justice, like where Wesley Crusher was going to be put to death? And yeah, and he basically whole just, bunch just of them. Yeah, a whole bunch. Whole bunch. Whole bunch. Uh, Devil's Jew. Devil's Jew. <laughs> carry on, carry on. <laughs> yeah. I keep thinking of them now. You got me yeah. thinking. Yeah. Carry on. Uh, oh, but it, it seems like the hundred-year-old ships. Their main purposes is uh, is to ferry um, uh, diplomats and ambassadors around. That seems to be all they ever do. They just yeah, we've dropped off an ambassador, and you know that that's their whole job. So it must be fairly boring to be a captain of one of those ships. You know they don't get to do anything fun at all. And mm. uh, next, Sabin brings up the events of Star Date four four three nine zero point one, when uh, Picard delivered a supposed Vulcan ambassador named Tapel uh, to the Romulan neutral zone, and it turned out that she was actually a Romulan spy who had been delivered back to the enemy. Uh, Sai highlights the fact that Picard had willingly let T'Pol go, despite knowing she had classified information from the Federation. But question number six, what was the name of the episode that that took place? Was it A, Data's Day, B, The Neutral Zone, C, The Enemy Within, or D, The Defector? I will put that all in chat for you 
I will endeavour to do so thusly. Was it A, day as day, B, the neutral zone, C, the enemy within, or D, the defector? Um, so, next picture. Worf, who up until now, up until this point, has been siding with Sati because he's been given all this responsibility, suddenly realizes that the hearing is where, where the hearing is going and attempts to defend his captain, stating that the Enterprise was outnumbered by many Romulan warbirds. And Picard did the only thing that he could do. Wolf. Well, the thing is, he, he, he would have went through an automatic court-martial for something like that anyway. Mm. You know, they, or, or at least some sort of admiral briefing there's there's no like it's already been ruled on there would have been something you know he would have had to go back and have a debriefing with with yeah the highest command about what the hell happened there you know because yeah. yeah. it went sideways didn't it yeah so you have your debriefing and then they all decide on it and you know if it doesn't go to court martial then it's fine they, they've they've already ruled on it so you, yeah. you can't just bring it up again but basically what you know Picard says is you know these things are being ruled and i've reported on them and you have all this mm. information and basically she says that well yes we know and we're going to be going through all that again and digging up everything we can and you know <laughs> raking it over yeah. the coals it's a bit like with Tarsis. They're just sort of saying stuff to rattle the person on the stand, yeah. right? Yes, There's no that's basis right. for anything they're saying. They're just mm. provoking. Uh, Worf is uh, rebuffed with how he had security do nothing during the spy stay on the Enterprise and accusations again of his father's supposed betrayal to the Romulans, at which point Picard calmly restrains Worf because he jumps out of his chair and kind of postures towards yeah, the well, bench. Well, well, <laughs> oh, God, it's to be, escalate. She was posing as an ambassador, so someone else passed her, not Worf. Mm. You know, she, she'd pass. She'd give, be given her security clearance. If, if you're on a if you're on a British Navy boat and someone comes along with the proper clearance, you a know, lot of it was like you're, a lot of it was under the guise of from Starfleet. You're not qualified to know about this. You just got to transport yeah. her, and you're not. You know, you can't ask questions. Type thing. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, exactly. yeah, you so. can't blame Worf for it. He was just. He was given security clearance from, you know, Starfleet Command. So if anything, you know, annoy Starfleet Command, don't annoy him. And then Sai questions Picard about his past experience as the Borg uh, and his role in the massacre of Wolf 359, which is a bit of a kick in the gonads. She questions oh. his very choice of loyalty to Starfleet. I was just going to say, I like this guy in the background, really like Grimace, and he's, he's doing some good background acting there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we usually see him in a yellow uniform. That guy. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, she's she's going way, way over the top now. Uh, Picard finally responds to these accus accusations laid against him by quoting her famous father's words about the dangers of denying basic rights to one man in the name of protection. You know, it's basically, I like the fact that right here I mean, we get again that face, uh, that face. I think I, palm, I think palm. I had a had a T-shirt of that exact moment at some stage. I don't know what I did with it, but I did have it. I may still have it. Yeah, but I like the fact that you know, even though she's kind of accused him for the massacre of Wolf Three Five Nine and being in collusion with the Borg all along and working with the Romulans and all this stuff. And he just completely ignores everything she says and still brings it back to her accusations against the ensign. And that, you know, once you accuse one single innocent person, then, you know, if that one link in the chain is broken, then effectively the whole of society can break down and we must stand against that. I, I love how um, conspiracy theorists can be so confident they've uncovered a conspiracy. It's like, yeah, you know, all, all the minds were all the world's best minds are behind it, but you know, you Google something and it was just there on YouTube. It was, you know, 
<laughs> took no effort at all for you to find the answer. No, and I totally don't do that. <laughs> and I just Sean can't... clearly doesn't watch any of your other uh, Shush. Your channel. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, uh, so a couple of things um you know that, that guy you just mentioned uh, the one in the background um he's actually an uncredited unnamed ensign on that guy 26 episodes let's say we see yeah. him a lot oh nice we see him a lot yeah he's quite often he's stood unnamed. at the arch or uh we don't know who uh, he is. Helm. <laughs> he's at the helm a lot um, um, his his actor name is uh was it Ed, elliot durant the third or something uh, yeah elliot durant the third um, but yeah, thank you. He's yeah, we quite often see him in wearing a yellow uniform at the arch or at home. Uh, but in here, in this particular scene, he's wearing a, a red uniform, which is slightly unusual mm -hmm. for that guy. <clears throat> uh, do you know? Do you know what it could be? Because there's a lot of uh, the security team wearing yellow, so maybe oh, they maybe they have got not yellow. enough yellow uniforms. Yeah. I, 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 honestly, it could be that simple it, that, because they had the whole really security could. team all wearing yellow together. Yeah, yeah. The yellows were taken. Uh, and then Sparty uh, basically loses her shit. She right? loses her shit because uh, <laughs> Picard dared um, use her father's name to justify his argument. She she rises from her chair and interrupts Picard, accusing him of treason and conspiring with the Romulans. She calls men like him a threat to the entire Federation, whom it's her job to seek out and destroy. She warns him that she's brought down bigger men even than you. So, yeah, she she really loses her shit at this stage. I find it nicely um, ironic that she just literally seconds ago um, said that somebody else's father was a traitor. And then when Picard just uses a beautiful, eloquent quote of her father, she loses her shit. It's like, mm, double standard, much. Yeah. Hypocrite. I thought Sean awesome. was looking at the tap dancing data then. He was, uh, at, the, he was at the back there, like, like just like, watching. Uh, <laughs> like, don't eat him. Don't eat him. <laughs> don't I'm eat there. data. No. Don't eat them. Oh, so that was like, that's I just, want to eat that's just data. Rude. That's just rude. <laughs> You don't want data squirming around in your mouth. No, only Tavikins wants that. She she might do. <laughs> she might do. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've got I, that I, I was say, I, Oh I, no, I, you're doing a face palm. Uh, no, no, that, that one. I, uh, I, 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 lo I love the tradition of them. <laughs> of the admirals wearing yeah, they, different uniforms in every episode. They they just they just keep changing it. They never decide on what hmm. an admiral's uniform looks like. Yeah, it's got some weird V-neck. Uh, it's got some Saturday night stuff going that's on. That's a real belly button level V-neck, right? It's uh, it doesn't look great, does it? It's not a great look that uniform. And you know, it's it's the quality. You know, they're saving money with this episode. He he wasn't even a paid actor to deliver a line. So to Why show, didn't they just put him in one of the older, you know, Admiral? It looks I don't know. It's a cheap, cheap looking uniform, and he comes in. He's so disgusted at this point that he, even as look at his combat, it's not even square. He gets up, wordlessly leaves the room, bringing an end to the interrogation, mm -hmm. uh, and saving the production a thousand books because he didn't have any lines. He didn't have any lines, so but if he had no lines, they could have just got an extra that fitted an admiral. Yeah, they they, they they could have just paid him two hundred dollars for the day. They could have got Elliot like... Durant the third to like put the uniform. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um. Yeah, so the Admiral walks out in disgust, embarrassed. Sabin declares a recess until the following day. Yeah, that's going to happen. And the room empties, quickly leaving Say alone and shaken and embarrassed at our own uh, sort of uselessness. Basically, by turning her father's words back on her, Picard has goaded in, into revealing the depth of her fanaticism and paranoia in front of an audience severely damaging her credibility, possibly permanently, forever. She would never get another job. She would go back into retirement and never be heard from again. Yeah, well, as I say in um, uh, Dark Knight, you know, you either die a hero or you live long enough to become a villain. 
Yeah. Later on in the observation lounge, Picard is informed by Worf that Admiral Henry has officially called off the hearings and that Satie has departed the Enterprise, presumably onto the unnamed uh, Excelsior class ship. Um, though it's unlikely that she will ever be trusted with such authority again, Worf cannot help feeling guilty for having been deluded into aiding her cause without realising what she was and what she stood for. Can I say I love the lighting in this shot? Uh, you know, obviously t- trying to make it look late at night, uh, but it's nice to see everything not just lit up like all, all over. And uh, I love the way that Picard's hand magically goes through the window, no problem at all. Yeah, it does. Mm. It, this is one of those times where his 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 wrist, his hand does kind of go through the window, um, especially when he turns around in a bit. It kind of like it does go out through the window. <laughs> Never mind. Also, there's some sort of beam here and it's probably a um holding up some lights or something yeah some they they something. they set the camera just slightly too high so you can see the sort of construction of yeah, the set did, yeah. above the panel mm. yeah there, there's some there's better be some steel frames for hanging lights and microphones and, and they uh, just needed rates. to set this camera just a an inch or two lower but uh, back back in the day, they didn't have uh, instant replay. That they only came in a few years later. So yeah. you know, they basically put a VCR, like uh, you know, a, a tape camera beside it, so that they could they could see the angle of it. But they they couldn't just replay it and check it straight away. Plus, they I don't know. If it, th- it might be a Blu-ray, th- you know, HD yeah. thing. It might not have been in the original. But I know they they do take like where where yeah. where some shots were cut. Yeah. They do, scan, try, yeah. they do try to use everything for the HD scans to get as many pixels as they can. So I don't know if maybe that was just an artifact of they just went too far. Yeah, it's possible, HD. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, because uh, Worf's feeling a little, uh, you know, disappointed with how it all panned out. Picard tells him that such enemies who cloak their misdeeds with the pretense of serving the greater good are often difficult to spot. Although it's very unlikely Sati will ever be trusted again, people like her will always be waiting in the wings for a time to strike and spread fear, mistrust in the name of righteousness. And Picard tells Worf to continue, continual vigilance against this is the price that they all must continually pay. And that was the end of the episode. And we had a nice shot of the Enterprise. I've got to end on a nice D-pick. There you go, the Enterprise. Flying off to the side and flying away. Yeah, there we go. Tavigan says this Riesling is basically water. I'll have to get gin from here on out. Yes, love the gin. Get a good Chardonnay. Um, uh, or, or a Pinot, Pinot Grigio. Yeah, or a Sauvignon Blanc. You know, mine's 12%. If that helps. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so nice end of episode. I've uh, got a few end of episode comments to make. I don't know whether to make them, you know, before or after scoring and all that kind of thing. Um, but on. probably one of the sort of first ones is that this episode shares a theme with Homefront. And in DS9, it's like that whole, you know, paranoia, security versus mm. freedom versus, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think. I do think, you know, I mean, Homefront, um, it's what, it's the only sort of two-part that were named different things, Homefront and Paradise Lost, um, is amazing oh, yeah. two-part, it's yeah, done yeah, really it well, is, it's it definitely amazing. not a bottle show, no. um, um, but yeah, it's like sort of similar themes, which are but then sort of done there, which, you know, is just a, a nice sort of continuity of that, you know, the, the, the moral behind the story, I guess. Um, also, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, but this episode talked about the genetic encoding of, um, you know, using um, deoxyribo. What do they DNA. call it? De- they called it deoxyribo, didn't they? Deoxyribose, like it's a plural. But yeah, it's normally deoxyribonucleic acid, which is DNA. But it was about, you know, taking information and encoding it into DNA somehow mm. and then in- inserting it into somebody. And um this was actually talked about in the um, in an episode of Enterprise Broken Bow with the Suliban Suliban Cabal. Oh yeah. Um, they, they talked about genetic coding of information and stuff and using somebody as a carrier. Um, so you know, it, I think it seems a little bit odd, maybe that if it was something 
that was a technology that long ago that you know it was sort of a bit surprising now to have it as a technology you think it would be a lot more prevalent or at least that they would have developed some kind of countermeasures around that well Well, you think especially if if the klingon had come aboard with a known condition that was being looked at by medical staff this is the other thing is you know they should have known that you know if they were giving him hypersprays would he have his own personal hyperspray i mean is a hyperspray like getting a you know, having like a drip, is it the sort of thing somebody would have a personal one of? And even if they knew he had a personal one, it obviously has been modified. And I don't know, just uh, stuff about that seems a bit odd. But Hold on, yeah. you're trying to suggest that Enterprise broke canon by bringing something in a little bit too early. I'm, I'm struggling just to wrap saying, my head around just that. Saying. You know, like having just the Borg saying. or the Ferengi or the Romulans in before anyone ever met them, you know, anything like that. Oh, it's, it's just, Madness. Shush, Sean. <laughs> another another little interesting tidbit, which you know I haven't sort of verified myself, but just from the reading online, um, is that in um, All Good Things Part One, they talk about Nora Sati as being the officer who officially gave Captain Picard command of the Enterprise D. Really. I mean, that's not referenced here in this episode, and we're not aware at this point. It that, seems you know, like it's had... almost the first time they met. Like, she... Yeah. Um, yeah it yeah. might have been, you know, officially gave him command. I mean, yeah. I mean, it did seem like the first time they'd met, you know, when they talked about her dad and stuff like mm. that. But later on, it's referenced. Whether it was a case of signing a form, you know, I don't know Maybe. what officially gave him command means. It could have been a rubber yeah. stamp, you know, back at HQ or something. But... Yeah, she could have been the, the signer and not actually met her because obviously mm. you, you do see in um, the episode with Jellico who's coming back. Um, but basically you see the changeover ceremony where they change over from one to another. But uh, you'd presume whoever's in charge of the shipyard or someone would do that when they're they're taking over a ship. I don't know. Yeah, you might you say it might just be the person, the first signature on the um, you know, on the admiral's orders that assigns you commander or something like that. Yeah. Mean that. And another little final one before I get to any yeah. kind of um, reception stuff is that, um, coincidentally, the um, co- 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 coinc yeah, anyway. coincidentally, coincidentally, um, the guy who played the Betazoid and the guy who played Admiral Henry, they were both born on the same day of the same year. July fourth, nineteen forty-five. Wow. Okay. Same birthday, just random. Random weird coincidence. <laughs> uh, should I go to the question? Yes. Uh, what was the question? Oh, the question was. Everybody uh, answered A. I can tell you. That. <laughs> oh. Wow. Um, okay. So it makes no difference to the outcome whatsoever. So, what was the name of the episode? That took it was Day as Day. Everybody got that right. I I really thought. Yeah, I I know it wasn't that long ago we reviewed that episode. It wasn't massively long time yeah. ago, but it didn't sound. I thought I chose like the neutral zone and the other episodes. I just thought sounded more like plausible. <laughs> you you nearly caught me with the defector, and then I remembered what a great episode that is, and it came back in my head. I was like, oh no, yeah. it's not that. Do we have any defector. ties? Is there any tying? There is no tie. Yeah, we got an outright um, winner. We have one clear winner. All right. Well, I've got, I've got a fun, I've got a fun. I had a tie question ready, but ah, for no points, a, for no points, a fun, a fun question then, and and everybody got you know, be quick in chat. Um, of those episodes, so Data's Day, the Neutral Zone, the Enemy Within, and Defector, which one's the odd one out? One of those is not then, like the other. Defect- Eh? No, uh, I, I said the, I can't remember what the enemy within is, but I'm assuming it doesn't have Romulans in it or any references to Romulans. Is that what yeah? It is? One of them is um, Cardassians, right? Well, I, I will say, anybody in anything. chat, do you know? Do you know what what it is? Uh, um. <laughs> Tavi, by the way, says many senior officers don't meet their subordinates or, you know, she knows examples where colonels said that they never met their reviewing officers. So the whole thing about Sati potentially, um, you know, rubber stamping sounds highly plausible. So, yeah. You're right there, Tavi. She's, she's gone she's on, on her phone. She's on her phone. Can we hear you now? 
Can you hear me? Yay! Hey! 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 No background, just my green Hi, screen. That's oh, fine. No, that's you fine. Can that's that's that's, that's better than fine. That's great. Oh my god! Happy. This is like so strange You're not having a voice. Shop. I'm gonna have to maybe just turn you down a little bit. Now you're on that one. All right. Nobody is answering. Are you saying I'm a loud mouth? No, no. <laughs> you're just a bit louder on your phone than you are on yeah. your head. Um, right. So, uh, did anybody uh, come up with an actual answer? Nobody's answered. In Nobody's chat. answered in chat. Oh, chat. Oh. Um, okay. So. <laughs> I thought Ruth would be in there for sure, right? Yeah, I thought Ruth. I thought uh, I thought Ruth was going to have this one. I thought, yeah, but it is the enemy within. That is the odd one out. But why is okay. it the odd one out? Because it's not a TNG episode. It's a TOS oh. episode. Oh, God. it's the it's the, fifth, it's the fifth episode of the first season of TOS. That would explain why wow. I couldn't remember the enemy within. I couldn't get it in my head. I was like, it's one I was where it's one where well, um, like, oh, an away team uh, brings brush. One of the away team, a red shirt, brushes like an orange rock, and uh, comes back and it changes everybody's mind and everybody goes mad. Anyway, oh, is that the one where, where Sudo has the sword and all that? Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah, oh, okay. and okay. because uh, and, and Kirk's the, just like um, Kirk, Kirk's like men. Oh no, that's the the one with the sword. That's the naked now. Yeah, that's uh, the naked yeah, now. That's yeah, that's the naked, naked now. Naked, the naked the time. Sorry, not the naked now. Yeah, that's the, the naked now is the TNG remake. TNG. Yeah, the naked time. I remember but, those horny episodes. It's very Ruth much says, like. I can't believe no like one got time. that. But why didn't you say it, Ruth? Why didn't you say it? Yeah, the enemy Mom within. Japan was waiting for you. I just remember uh, Kirk like <laughs> screaming in the camera, like really, like with dark eyeliner on, just like ah, just like you know. So are you are you are you trying to suggest that Shatner was overacting? I I I wouldn't I say that. that. Hard to believe. I, I that would no, not can't. possible. Not possible. It's just not possible. Um, I was just watching the episode of um, <laughs> uh, Big Bang Theory today where um, Will Wheaton is trying to do fun with flags with Sheldon and um, Amy keeps saying, no, you need to be more positive. So he goes, I am so happy about flags. And then she says, now you're overacting. And Sheldon's like, oh, I thought it was brilliant. You reminded me just of Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very good. Love that. I, 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 I also love the one with uh, with Brent where uh, he brings out his, his data figure and then he just rips open the package. It was actually Will Wheaton's. Will had signed it for Sheldon. And, yeah. oh, and so, Brent Spiner oh, yeah. walks yeah, up and goes, I mean, Oh, what's this? Oh, he's these pages and rips it open. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then he offers to there. sign one for everybody for like 20 bucks. Yeah, he's like, oh, I got some in my car. Yeah, 20 bucks. <laughs> oh. yeah, if you haven't seen a tabby, go find that. Well, big I've seen it. I was, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> one of the one of the cool things about acting that um, at least explains like that generation of acting in TOS um, was not because they like the individual actors had overacting skills. Is that a lot of them were taught after the um, occurrence of silent films. So if you went to art uh, art school or an acting school that was teaching an older um, type of curriculum, um, people like Shatner and, and a lot of people working back then, you were taught to overreact, overreact like when you were in school yeah, because absolutely. you were in silent films and there were no words. So you had to do mm -hmm. everything with your face, especially if the script was very thin um, so people could get the story. And... Mind you, it's like this by the time they start acting in TOS, um, there's a new style of acting and things have got better, but that doesn't cancel out what everybody's been taught with acting so far. I, so I it, it, it's also theater training because when you're, you're in a theater, you know, you have to play to the 15 rows back. You know, you can't, you're not just uh -huh. playing to the front row. So you have to be, you have to really overdo it so everyone sees you. This so is the scene. That too. This is the scene from The Enemy yeah. Within that. Uh... Uh, I remember with uh, with Kirk going yeah. mad because of the uh, that space main dust. One? Oh my! <laughs> he looked like he was on the toilet for that other one, that big one. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they, they quite often when, when people come from theater, you know, and they, they put the camera right on them, they have to tell them, like, you know, it's fine. The camera's right on you. You know, you don't need to play to the back seats. Mm. It's okay. You can just raise your eye by half an inch and, you know, it's fine. It was great. <laughs> That's what I, I was saying. It. Right. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, right. So, uh, uh, live chat, remember to put out of 10, what do you rate uh, tonight's episode? The drumhead trial from zero to ten. Uh, what what would you rate it? Um, and we will get. Our, and whilst you're doing that, I will just get up the. Who was the winner of this week's quiz, Masma Bob? It was. Oh. Drumhead. He's, been, he's he's been the leader all the way through, so it's not that much of a surprise. Oh. Stu Plum. That does actually make <laughs> oh, a difference one. because Tavikins was joint leader for this season with Stu Plum. For one wow. week, I think you caught up, didn't you? For one and week. Now, Only one week. Now, for this end of the episode, you actually have got your acoustics working again, so you can feel free to go ahead and do your con. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also <laughs> yeah he tasked me. me and i shall have him <laughs> very good well i could i could yeah i could have put a um that that would that would have worked quite well wouldn't it ah! yeah <laughs> I almost feel like you need to do a shaking fist. I gotta do the face now. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Other side. Yeah. That would have worked quite well. Can I do the Kirk face? Yeah. Yeah, you, you really can. I, I wonder is that. I wonder is there a deep fake plug-in kind of for OBS scary. so I, I I can put like a can face on me. You know, like a Halloween mask. Oh, well, it's something for you to work on next week. <laughs> at least the one in the. I, in the, I the one can't in the figure out the sound. The one in the big caption, it looks like he's tongue. yelling. But the three little ones in the sort of bottom left captions, they all look like he's just severely constipated. Oh, well, like these and ones. One where he's actually <gasps> even lifting himself off the loo. That definitely, that, that, that's mega constipated. And then the one on the left is like. Yeah, far left. Far left. Far left. You know, he's, he's, always, he's, he's grabbing the, the lid of the loo to like give leverage for his constipation. Yeah. Now. Uh, I, I, I'm sure. Um, anyway, I'm sure. Mo I'm sure most of you know the answer to this, but, but given it's 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 timely, we just passed Halloween. What um what series of horror films did, uh, did did William Shatner feature in? Horror films. What series of horror. Films? A series of horror films. Yeah. It's a bit of a trick question. I can't remember. But while we think about that, maybe we get on with the uh, scoring. Scoring. Okay. Go for it. You have asked people to score, right? Nobody has scored anything. Yeah, Someone yeah, answer yeah. in the chat. Supreme Panko, what did you reckon this episode? Uh, let us know. Yeah. Halloween. Uh, do you want to bring up the spreadsheet? <laughs> Halloween. Was it Halloween? Halloween. Oh, Halloween Ruth is the correct answer. So ah, the, the Mike Ruth Myers Ruth. mask in Halloween is a William Shatner mask sprayed white. I did know that. I, I did know that. Yes, that is, yeah. that is, that is true. That is true. Yes. And he never got a single penny for any of them. No, no. He, si he signed away his rights for $200. Panko gives it a seven. Oh, that's a good uh, good opening gambit. Panko's with a seven. Anybody else in chat? Ruth's with a five. Uh, right. Bring up this bird sheet. Oh, should I bring up the... Uh, the scores on the oh yeah and i, I wanted to uh show you so yes that's put stuplum on seven uh tavikins now is in silver place with six subspace chatter dan from subspace chatter is in third place with four and that has demoted unfortunately mazin with bob and andrew with two each has demoted them out of the uh the medals positions i don't mind You'll survive, won't you? You'll survive. I literally just did it for fun. I 
if I won, I'd probably feel bad, like I'm the founder of this. I shouldn't be winning. A bit like you, Monty. It's like I just do it to make up the numbers. Though. I just, <laughs> I just usually like one win of a season. I always get a win a season and a moment because I've been doing all the questions. Uh, That's I, true. That's I haven't true. got a win yet. <laughs> Maybe, you know, maybe we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, five episodes left? Five episodes left, left of the maybe, season here. Yeah. Maybe, you know, we need to, like, jostle it about a bit and actually take it in turns to do the questions to give Monty Banner a yeah, chance to Yeah, Sean, Sean or Tavikins want to do the, the questions next week? <laughs> uh, I think yeah. Sean would make a good question master. <laughs> Tavi's like, yeah, make it Sean so I can get my vine. <laughs> she wants the points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm chasing pine, stew plum like a little girl with a crush in the schoolyard. Got to get that. All right, I'll do some questions for next yeah. week. That's fine. Right, okay. Yeah, they got to be about the episode, Sean. The episode, yes, yeah. yes. You're on traffic. Mm. <laughs> right, are we ready? Are we ready with our paddles then? So, oh, well, you know I am. Three. I'm so naughty every time you say it. Oh, get your I'm paddle out and paddle. give it a That's good. That's paddling. Right. Three, two, one. Where? Oh, there you go. Uh, Seven, six, eight, six. Oh, it's a. It's kind of like I think there are there about, you know. Yeah, I went a bit higher on this one. I I, I liked it. It's, it's a I, great episode. It's I, one of the better ones to track of Star Trek of Next Generation. Anyway, it's a you massively... shut your filthy mouth, Sean. It is a hugely heralded episode. Like a lot of people say it is within one of their top favorite episodes. Um, our posts on Facebook, like I asked people to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. People are like, you know, one of the biggest thumbs up of all time. It's like one of the best episodes. It's a massively, massively popular episode. Um, uh, 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 and I get that. And I understand that people like it. And I've got no problem with other people liking it. But, you know, I, I, I can't just go with the popular vote when... You know, I kind of, I mean, there are so many good things about it in terms of like Picard and his portrayal and, you know, some of his monologues and stuff. And I really loved that element of it. And there was some really good character development, as um, you mentioned, Sean, with Worf. But um, oh, I just found Sati so annoying. And um, I found, you know, a lot of it just so almost unbelievable for like a, an enlightened race. And um I kind of did find it a teeny bit boring in the middle. Uh, I hate to say this, you know, because I probably shouldn't have found it How a bit boring, you. but I did. But I did. Um, so yeah, so that's why I've sort of marked it a little bit lower than I would usually for other episodes in the series. I think yeah, I think that, if... I've had a few sixes by the looks of it. Hmm. I think yeah, um, if I <clears throat> It's not again. It's like a, the thing I've suffered with throughout this whole rewatching recently. It's not one I'd normally watch, you know, because it is a little boring. It's not one of those episodes mm. over the years that I've gone back to. And I felt it quite, I say, I was picked out by Picard's performance. I thought it was very strong. And the, the monologues, I think, you know, they didn't speak to me like 18, 19 year old me back in the early 90s. But now, at the place we're in at 2022, like a lot of those things, I think we do have to be conscious with, with like Twitter and, uh, you know, the, the cancel culture mob, you know, you know, they're, they're going counseling like, um, uh, uh, what's her name? We wrote Harry Potter, you know, J.K. Rowling. She has just a, a, an opinion that, some people don't like, and now every, every you know she's not allowed to have an opinion on on platforms or you know. And I think these people that try to suppress people's rights just based on their own righteousness uh, is kind of a thing that is kind of even more relevant today than it than it was even back when this episode came out. So I think it just. I saw it saw it differently, and it spoke to me a little bit differently than than I'd seen it before. The, the Orville has a great episode where they have those little thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes, that's right. Yeah, like yeah. Like dislike buttons. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, they they developed after Twitter came out, but uh, yeah, they, they they do it so well. 
Yeah, again, Love it. it's a mo- that's a modern series talking about modern topics. This is like an old, old series, but still yeah. manages to like serve up something still relevant for us now. Yeah. So, I think it's well, there was impressive. still cancel culture back then, just not in the same way. You know, you can still no, be <laughs> definitely not in the same there, way. There, there, there was trial by press back then. You know, we would have called it as yes. opposed to cancel culture, but it were more or less in the same area. So, I think I was right here by saying both Mazma Bob and Tavikins were sixes. That was right, wasn't it? Because I was seven and Sean was eight. Um, what did what was the average then of what we had in chat along with Sean? Um, obviously, yeah, just, I mean, sure. Because we had so a five a from six. Ruth, a six from Mickey, a five from Stu Plum. Yeah, uh, did so the average is 6.2. Oh, seven, so seven from six. Supreme Panko. Yeah, seven, five, six, five, eight. Yeah. Rounds to 6.2, which rounds six. six. Point- Six, so six. six yeah, yeah. Two. Yep, six. I think, you know, that seven, six. I think that's exactly where this episode is. I'm again really happy <laughs> with how this turned out. You know, this has been like a really sort of solid season. There's been no real like massive clangers. Mm. It's just been all right. And I know Sean even, will say even- it. Even Night Terrors did better than I thought it would. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was, thought I was I'd give this a two before I watched it. And, oh, no, it's not as I bad agree, as I remember. Yeah. Night yeah. Terrors was a bit of a surprise for me. I really. literally thought the whole thing was just um, Troy going through space, but that only actually occupied about like 20, 30 seconds of the episode. <laughs> Night Terrors has literally done better than, well, a lot of episodes in the second half of the season. <laughs> Apart oh, from wow. maybe Clues and First Contact. But I um, mean, it's been joint with uh, identity crisis and uh, no, sorry, the nth degree in Cupid. So you know, it was a it was a decent episode, wasn't it? Well, they've all I been middling. They've say, all been middling. I, I got I gave my six here, but I think had has Gene Roddenberry passed away at this point? Yeah, I believe uh, so. Around now, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and well, it, I, I, this yeah. this episode hit me like I, I just. To me, it was almost unbearable because anybody who's ever been in the military, and I think a lot of people by this time had like served in some capacity. This was like based on so much drama, but it put it took me out of the show by how uh, dependent it was on creating um, an emotional um, leap for the audience instead of actually writing very smartly. Because a lot of the stuff that went on in this episode was just this would just never happen and then you can't mm-hmm. say that this would happen in the future when you're trying to tell everybody how advanced everyone is um and, and i th- just thought they they really cheaped out on writing something compelling because it's okay that if her character was like that that's not the issue but the way she executed it wasn't cleverly written unless they're going to go on they're going to lean on the fact that Oh, maybe she's out of it because what she's old, retired, or overly like bur- old as in she's she's been in this so long that she's lost perspective. But I think even as an admiral, she would have been smarter and a bit more wiser than that. I she thought it was have strange been at the top of your game like that, and then been that one-sided, that neurotic, that unbalanced. I mean, uh, it just yeah, it just it does seem like slightly poor writing. In yeah. A way. She might have, she I might have been Admiral, early stage Alzheimer's or something. I don't know. You know, you know, she, she was she getting old. She might have she might have been starting to suffer with some sort of de- degenerative <laughs> illness. You know that we don't. Know. Yeah, and the only admiral that showed any behavior was the guy leaving at the end because, like, one thing they they have, or at least that they hone on a lot, even when I was in the military and officer training, is that you praise in public and you reprimand in private and you mm-hmm. never disrespect other personnel and other. And so that was just just flagrant disrespect through all of it to mm-hmm. have the captain on trial in front of his his uh, subordinates to have yeah. it, it was just it was outrageous. Like, no, it just like, what happen. are we doing? I, it took me out of the episode so bad. Yeah. That you, I, you, you I, said it much better than I said it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a very good point. That is a very good point. Night, night, Stuplum. Good evening. Good night to you, sir. Night, Stuplum. Um, 
I yeah, no, I, 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 I do get that, and it kind of leaves you a little bit uh, uh, wanting more comeuppance for her because all you get is like the admiral silently walking out, but you want to see the aftermath of that when they get back to their ship. You know, when yeah, just, when he hauls her back to that Excelsior, the unknown Excelsior class ship, you know, <laughs> you want to see. But what I mean, like even then, even then, they would just look at her and say, "You brought discredit to yourself and Starfleet. We will return you to retirement." I want to see that scene though. <laughs> like, yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, it was. She, she more or less it. just got got Prince Andrew. You know, just quiet retirement. You don't talk about her anymore. Just don't talk about her. Mm-hmm. She'll be at the back of the photos somewhere now. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Just just brought out for all In the events. Admiral retirement home. Yeah. I would imagine that they would have done it like that because I mean, at this point, they probably would have said she may. There's, there's got to be something wrong with her. There's no way you can you can just dissolve this badly, and in front of everyone, but. Because Maybe she's just is, in, like, it, Picard because he was, like, he has plot armor. <laughs> and so yeah. she didn't like how he was so flagrantly able to sidestep rules or whatever. I don't know what her problem was, but it was just, like, could, can't do it. I'm sorry, I bitch, I'm on the bridge. That. I don't think um, what he said to her just came to him in a flash of genius. I think it was just one that he had in the chamber that he knew mm. would make her melt down and just, you know held it back, held it back, held it back. And then it got to a point where she was so disrespectful that he was like, oh, I'm going to have to fire the bullet. Yeah. 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 But that would I'm indicate sorry, that he knew that she was that unbalanced. Smack that chick on the bridge, though. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. She would have got Will Smith. Yeah, well, she I'm... got a Will Smith. Uh, like, the second they stepped up on the bridge, be like, Will well, Smith, that up mother. On our captain yeah. on the bridge? Girl, I'm sorry. I would have been like, Data... We need Android level back uh, bitch slapping on the bridge right now because this chick done lost her goddamn mind. <laughs> so Jesus. Anyhow, uh, I'm I'm just currently working out what the next episode is so I can get the uh, trailer. The trailer. The trailer. Half, really, life. Yeah. Half a life. I would have given this a two, but Sorry. Data's ass fixed this episode because he. I Sorry. Look... Sorry. I was just going to say, the next episode is starring not Roll Aaron. Roll Aaron is not uh, in this episode. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to present no. it in such a way that uh, you can hear it. Oh, hear it. it. But yes. <laughs> is it starting? Oh, here we go. Here is the trailer for the next episode. A dying planet hangs on the brink of destruction. Even if I find the solution, you will not accept it? And the only man who can save it is sentenced to die. The man is supposed to kill himself. Now, you don't just let that happen. Now, Picard must risk war to keep him alive. Our ships have been ordered to open fire. They expect Timison to die! Death sentence on the next exciting episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Wow. Yeah, look, looking forward to seeing Mikhail Gorbachev guest star on Star Trek next week. <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't remember that episode at all. That's not ringing any bells with me out. That's unusual. Like, I know, I mean, I know well, I haven't watched them in a long time, and I, but uh, I know every episode. That just is not ringing any bells with me. Well, yeah, it's the Logan's one exactly episode. what episode you know? is. <laughs> uh the Logan's Run episode, you know, he hits an age and then they expect him to yeah. make room for the younger people. Wasn't that guy in MASH or something like that? Yes, he was. Yeah. And I think he, I mean, he might have died recently. I don't know. I saw something on one of the chat groups. Um, either it was his birthday recently or something like that. Oh, um, I forgot. Sorry. Oh, your forgot, figure thing. My figure. I forgot my. I, I nearly. We nearly got oh, to the end of the stream, figure, and I nearly forgot my figure of the week. It's the figure of the week. Sorry, I think it needs a theme tune. <laughs> Who is this Playmates Star Trek: The Next Generation figure? Shall I make myself big so you can see? see yeah, yeah. You're even it's tiny, tiny on my phone. Sorry. Yeah, answers in chat. There's no TNG points for this one, but who is this chap? (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm really not sure. O'Brien says Mickey. Oh God, that's... That's, that's, a, that's a good guess. It's not O'Brien. Take it's take a look at his. Me. Is it not? Oh, is it? Really? That, okay. That is Lieutenant Reginald Barkley. You can tell. Yeah. You can tell by his um, hairline. receding hairline. I said. I said oh. broccoli. <laughs> broccoli. It's yes. Ha Howling Mad Murdoch. Okay. It is Howling Mad Murdoch. Yeah, you can tell by his his hairline. That is a very accurate hairline. <laughs> Not the greatest sculpt on his face, or maybe it's just the lighting. I it's know. it's the light. It's the, it's my camera and lighting. It's not it's not the best, to be fair. For ah. But that that is who it is. Um, I was trying to find him for the Barkley episode a few episodes ago, and I couldn't I couldn't ah. find him. I couldn't find him in my bag of uh, in my bag of figures. But uh, I found him eventually. So I was like, oh, there he is. There he is. So um, yeah, brought him out. You get, you get, you yes. get your, your so moment in the David sunshine. David Ogden Styers, um, the guy who plays in the next episode, his birthday was October thirty first, so it was like two days ago. Um, however, he is dead, so it was a posthumous happy birthday. Ah, posthumous happy birthday. And he birthday. wasn't Mash. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of played like the posh guy in Mash, uh, who mm. liked fine the finer things and. Uh, um, you know, orchestral music, you know, and stuff like that. We are home just in on you again. Uh, on the oh, official. sorry. Just um, you know. It's not that I've got a problem with that, just in case you... I hate it, so <laughs> I, I, I'd much rather be tiny in the corner somewhere. Yeah, so that's it for this episode. Um, it's great to be back after, after a week off uh, and to say hello to all of you because we did miss you last week. Um and uh, we'll be back next Wednesday at 8 o'clock to talk about uh, Half a Life, the episode that I have seem to have just completely skipped in my, in my knowledge of Star Trek Next Generation. It's, it's not bad. I think you might enjoy it. Well, I... Oh, that's good. Because from that trailer, I was kind of like, oh, no. I thought, I thought season four got better. I, I think you might enjoy it. Oh, I might be maybe one of those surprising ones. That I'm like, oh, this is a really good episode. It's got the nice, you know, kind of moral thingies that you like. Oh, I like that. I do like that. You like the moral thingies. I like the moral thingies. <laughs> I like a good moral thingy. Yeah. Yeah. Has it got two storylines? Yeah, kind of, I think it does. It does, yeah. It has, it has, yeah, this, this, it has yeah, a moral episode, thingy and two storylines that intersect. This one didn't have an A and a B this week, no, did it? No, it didn't. It was all no. A. It was, it was all, all A. a. Yeah, yeah, it got a down mark for that one. Another reason yeah. why, yeah, not quite. Not I should have given it a six, shouldn't I? I should have given it. Maybe I'll change it. Maybe I'll change it. Uh, now you are the showmaster. Okay. Right? <laughs> it's my show. I can do one one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway well thank you everyone thank you mickey for coming along and chatting to us this evening uh super Ebeko! congratulations on your wedding and we hope we all hope here at uh, the vault that you are very happy with your with your new husband and you have a happy life together uh Good night uh, to, uh, he's not here anymore, but Stu Plum, thank you for coming along. Sorry, Andrew, you had to work like a Trojan as always, and you're too tired to come. Uh, but if you're watching this back, uh, we hope you have a good time anyway. Uh, um, Wookie, if you're out there and not saying anything, uh, I was gonna say good the evening thing. to you, sir. We hope you had a fun Wednesday. And to anyone else. Um, also to Gujon and um, Gujon, G -Star G -Star. And Ruth and everybody So else many of them. <laughs> How could I forget Ruth? Jeez. Come I know, on. I was just looking on my scoreboard just to make sure we covered everything. Yeah, <laughs> good evening to you all. And we'll see you next week if you're available to talk some more Star Trek The Next Generation. We shall see you then. Cheers. Super look forward to it. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.